What is up, YouTube? My Cowboys family here, bringing you guys the latest update on our very own Dallas Cowboys. And of course, as always, thank you so much for joining us here tonight on the Familyest of Fridays. You know it. Take a second to hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow us on all social media at My Cowboys Family, and of course, hop in the Discord link for that's in the description box down below. As we get rolling here tonight, guys, of course, we have some Cowboy News info updates and unfortunate shenanigans, as always, to discuss. But as we get rolling here tonight, we have some people to shout out you know, before we get into all those nitty-gritty Cowboy details. So thank you very much to our current sponsor of the week and Cash App King, Harley Dad. Right. Representing it, you know, on the extra late night not in the daytime, but after dark. <laughs> Always on the after dark side. Harley Dad showing up. He's a Niner fan. But shouting him out because he is the overall week winner last week as our sponsor week. And up there as the Cash App King. But then, of course, you got the man Jason Renfro took over the stream boss last time we were live. Fully loaded 100 points on the stream boss for Jason Renfro. And, of course, when it comes to the gifting membership king, the crown holder, it is the man that stays skeptical, skeptical fan. Not just one week, but two week, two weeks in a row, back to back. Representing much love, yes. skeptical. Like a, representing back to back, like our '90s Cowboys. Now, when it comes to this week, well, some new leaders. Jason Renfro is the leader. He's he's the, he's currently the stream boss, hundred points. He's also currently in first place with one gifted membership this week so far. So much love to him. He is holding the lead down. We only had two days this week so far in our channels. So again, he's in the lead. Gifting membership wise, with one drop of membership. And when it comes to the Cash App leader and the current overall leader for the sponsor of the week, it's only one man. You gotta know, guys, and much love to this this guy because he was also our big winner when it came to the uh, the raffle we had the other day. It's the man McLovin who's currently in the lead in the Cash App side in first place, also in the lead on the overall board. As you look up above there, you see Sco nine zero seven one. Marissa Sparkle, Seabass, and many others up there. Jason Renfro. Why is Seabass up there? I'll tell you why. Because he pre-streamed, joined the Over Everything Level membership. He's Ooh, back in it. Back in it. Thank you so much, Seabass. Appreciate you representing there, yeah. of course. We'll be seeing him on the channel here, not just sometime very, very soon, but also somewhere towards the end of April. Right, right around draft time. So we'll be hearing from Mr. Over Everything yeah, Seabass right, right himself. the little timing details there. Yeah, but yeah, I can't wait to hear from him again, yes. of course. Now, McLovin's staying in first place. Why? Because of the overnight, the, the, the days off we have, the after darks we have. So let me shout out those that have been repping it here with us on the after dark session, whether it's been Jason Renfro, Sco971, McLovin, Gloria, Marissa, Miko, and Grateful Nomad. Appreciate all you guys at the after dark love. On that side as well. You open the board. Everything's up, is updated. McLovin's in the lead. There's still, not just Friday, but the weekend here. Two more days on top of today to see who takes home the top spot. Now, on that note, we've shouted everybody out. But there's a lot of ways to drop the love here. Whether it is it is a gifted membership or jumping in the membership like Seabass did. Mm -hmm. Or Super Chats. You know, uh, there's, you can drop the Super Chat anytime here the in MCF. The Thanks button, of course. And the Thanks button, of course, when any video is posted. Speaking of Super Chat... Skeptical fan, always staying skeptical, dropping a 1-2-J Lou dollar holler. Woo. What does the man say? Go Cowboys. Oh, yeah, it's very love. satisfying that we can still say a J. Lou too. Yeah, Not going to yeah, lie. I, I agree. <laughs> I also, I got to say, Mr. Skeptical Fan, he is another guy who gave through the PayPal side of things, not just the Super Chat side. So that leads me I see a little, a little uh, fox over there saying number one. We also got to say Jason Renfro goes down to 98 points and... There's four other ways outside of those four we just mentioned that you can not just affect the overall board, but also the cash app side, which is where a lot of the people are dropping the love, like McLovin, Harley Dad, uh, Deadpool, and many, many others. How, how can they do that? Thank you very much to Mr. Or sorry, to... Or, yeah, you're sorry, I know, sorry, because you, it's because you shouted out those people. Sorry, real quick. But yes, there's four ways to support the channel. We have, of course, the cash app, money sign, my Cowboys family, the Venmo at my-cowboys-family, the regular PayPal link, and last but not least, the Streamlabs link lets your comments show up on screen, just like a super chat. That's right. And today, you know, we, it is Fan Friday, so you get the extra shout outs, not just the regular shout, shout outs you get for the star and over everything level. But speaking of those levels, we just had a raffle last time we were live on a Wednesday 
first day of our week this week, and we had star level. We had over everything level. Yep. Membership, uh, you know, people in there. But we also had our weekly winners, and it's, it's doing it again for the month of April. So the winner this week, whether it's the sponsor of the week, Cash App King, allow them to take both boards. You get yourself a bonus raffle entry for this end of the month raffle. And one of those people last month, well, I'll tell you, that was Jeremy Bramlett was one of them. We had Deadpool. We had Harley Dad. And we had McLovin, who was also one of the four weekly winners. Guess who won this last one, guys? McLovin. So he gifted it back to the family here, uh, to one of the kids, to rep that star for everything. Even as a Dolphin fan, much love to McLovin. And uh, we'll be doing another membership raffle here at the end of the month That's of right. April. We'll see who wins it. It'll be one of the weekly winners. It'll be a star level, over everything level membership. I don't know. But Seabass back in the over everything. Seabass, he'll have automatically two raffle entries. You're in over everything. You get a bonus raffle entry for these monthly raffles. So much love, extra love to Seabass and the over everything. And any of the weekly winners uh, getting those bonus entries. Now, it is a fan Friday and it is time to do a shout out on our silver level two today guys not just star and over everything but today it's also the silver level crew so baby give us the shout outs thank you very much to prince jackson mr a lavelle the longest running member here on mcf mr lc jason renfro the lunatic dwayne brassard the top dog skeptical fan mary alvarez marissa sparkle and over everything See bass. Yeah, yeah, much love Woo. to everybody in the house. Appreciate you all. Cannot do this without your love and support. As well as those in the house right now. Drop them a little love and support here when it comes to the comments and thoughts. So who's in the house in the chat tonight, baby? Let's do them shout outs. I have to shout out the man himself. See bass Woo. bringing it here. Yeah. saying, I will not be stopped. <laughs> much love to you. By the way, I actually just responded to your uh, Twitter messages like two minutes before we went live. So, glad I caught that in time. Rolando Rodriguez all the way from South Texas. Yeah, yeah. Skeptical fan, always staying skeptical. Yeah. And, and yes, uh, I know we talked already about the Diggs news, of course. Uh, a little but more addendum today. Oh, to the Diggs I did news. make a little joke in the chat saying we finally have the less problematic uh, one of the brothers, so to speak. So, uh, we usually get the more problematic players, don't we? Anyway, King Timbo 40, the clown show, you already know. <laughs> oh, sorry, some of your comments are cracking me up. Choice Roberts, much love. El Cool in the house. Even you, Lee Side Harold. I'm glad you found your favorite Dallas Cowboy channel mm -hmm. to talk about your favorite team in the state of Texas. How about, in, how about in the world? Of course. <laughs> so, rolling it back a little more. James Hur, hello and hi. Daniel Berry Sports, what's up? Texas Twister, stay safe out there on the road. Spoonie Dog representing. Asmodeus, all the way from Tennessee. You already know. Mm. Gaja Man, what's up? John Syme? Hopefully I said that right. McLovin, showing the love. Hello yeah. and hi. I'm sure we'll see you uh, later when the sun dark. goes yeah, down. We'll right? <laughs> Mad Man, hello. What's up? Freedom first. Ah, oh, not first today. Looks like Mary Alvarez beat you to the punch. Mm. Much love, Mary. Mary, Mary. Mary so, <laughs> coming through here. And Seabass, again, you, it's, that's uh, not... You know, the the mod situation has nothing to do with the length of membership or anything like that. So we actually all filled up. We had we had a pack with people, right? From yeah, back from, in the old from MCF seven days, years ago. We, yeah, you know, uh, we so, used to get like yeah. crazy amounts of trolls in our yeah. stream to the point where like it would just completely derail. <laughs> yeah, now it's some a lot. Live streams, now we got to now we got to think under control. Yes, guys, we're cowboy fans. We could take a little ribbing from other teams that got like one or two Super Bowls. Fuck them. Uh, I, I just, look, it's all good. Uh, I don't really get bothered by anybody talking shit. Uh, but, you know, if, if that's all you're doing or trolling or just putting it, you know, of course, personal attacks, you're out of here for that. But outside of that, we, we take our modding, you know, very seriously yeah. in the sense of we want to make sure it's freedom to speak your mind. Even if you're a cowboy hater, it just makes it better when we beat your ass. In the mm -hmm. season, or do you know, whenever we defeat that team, and they, they got to come back with their mm -hmm. tail between their legs, you know how that goes. And all good, Mr. Sebas. I just, I just want to make sure to make that clear, just because, uh, you know, I, I don't ever want anyone to feel like it's, you know, for or against anyone. We just basically yeah. instituted that so that no one feels left oh. out or favoritism or anything like that. And so much appreciated as always. 
Let me Ooh. see. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, so. you go, I actually have to add <laughs> one more person. All good. So, uh, and by the way, so yeah, so I guess let's kind of roll it back a little bit. Let's go ahead. Since Lee side's here, I guess we'll entertain it for like two seconds. The Stefan Diggs uh, talk. No, I'm just saying, well, I'm sure we will revisit it later when you have a little more information, my love. It's just that people are sharing their thoughts right now, like skeptical fans saying, you know, the Texans are better off drafting a receiver. Again, uh, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit yesterday, but, you know, it, it seems like the Texans want a little bit more of a sure thing. They, it doesn't seem like they wanted to gamble on a rookie receiver. That's just my obvious assumption. And again, the way that they kind of broke, you know, structured his contract and, and paid it out in such a way where, like, they're really putting the pressure on Stefan Diggs to step up and show off and show out we're gonna talk about it i promise we'll get to your old stuff on digs but uh <laughs> things have changed since since the deal went through so kind of you could look at it at a different different light right. uh but let me finish by a couple little shout outs you know jason renfro dropping the cash apps the last couple of days a dollar 60s like he dropped three of them and Dwayne Broussard, i think that was yesterday if i'm not mistaken dropped a two dollar thanks drop Ooh. big th- again another way of dropping the love here Dwayne Broussard. I think that's the only drop of the week, so he is in 14th place, but he's still on that board. And he said thanks when we were talking about the 30 visit rookies in Big D, you know, visiting and kind of seeing the Cowboys and breaking things down, talking about the backup offensive lineman, getting Chuma Adoga. That was the video. Much love to Dwayne Broussard. I appreciate you and everybody who dropped in the PayPal, in the Cash App, all the love, going back in memberships, gifting memberships. Can't do this without your guys' love and support now. Now let's get rolling with the news. You ready? Let's get I'm going. I'm more than ready. We got two days of news. And we might have to skip tomorrow if there's no news and just finish it up on a, on a Sunday. It'll be a three-day week this week. But you guys, you know, that board's still open for someone to take. So you never know. Now, Again, um, it, it, yeah. it, just, it cracks me up to think that, like, you know, why is our thing so quiet? Because I can tell you right now, things will not be quiet after the draft in May and June when the Cowboys start, you know, making all their moves and stuff like that. And that's what cracks me up because during a time where most people would be having a lot of discussions about their team, we are literally sitting here twiddling our thumbs waiting for the Cowboys to, what, wipe the dust off their bookshelf? Well, right? if, you look, if you look at our, our title, it might even be worse than that. Uh, anyways, the, the thing is, let's start off with NFL news with other teams having other problems, not just talking about our team having problems. So, Right now in Dallas was that big car car accident with Rasheed Rice yeah. and the Lamborghini, the Corvette. He was both cars were assigned to him. Uh, he was renting one. He owned the other one, I think. Now new news coming out that Dallas is reported that Dallas P- Police Department, P- Dallas PD, found 10.8 grams of marijuana in the Lamborghini that Rasheed Rice was driving in last Saturday's accident. Initially, it was reported, and this is the thing that sucks. People just don't know the laws. Initially, it was reported that it was 10.8 grams. People thought it was ounces. And it was a felony. A 10, point out, 10 ounces would be huge. Uh, he's like he's like trafficking. Yeah, he's, so, he's got like a whole baby brick over there. Yeah, so I mean, he's got a whole bunch of bricks. So my point is, is that, you know, they got, you got, you know, they were talking about 10.8 grams, and whoever was writing the report, thought, whoever was writing the, the article initially must have thought it was ounces. Because so it doesn't know their their, their mathematics. Because yeah, if you're if they looked it up under you know ten point eight you know ounces of of uh, marijuana, when you look at it like that, now you're looking at you know a felony you know law you just broke there. Ten point eight grams of, of marijuana possession in Texas and Dallas County currently is not a felony. It, it is a misdemeanor. So okay. now I don't know how that is when you apply it to car crash. When you apply it to, you know, you know, again, you remember he walked away. We thought it was drinking, I'm in weed, uh, and he. I don't know why know he didn't take the, the weed with him. The problem <laughs> but, is that, as you know, most of us who know this type of stuff, it's gonna be really hard for them to prove that he was under the influence at the time because they found the stuff. They can they charge him away, for having yeah. it, but they can't really charge him for being under the influence at right. the moment because, well, there's no proof. There's no proof, and he hasn't incriminated right. himself in that way. So, just so you guys know, the minimum for felony possession of marijuana. Is four ounces. When the guy who wrote the original article, he said ten point eight ounce, uh, eight ten point eight grams. And his when he looked it up, yeah, no wonder he looked, everyone was freaking out. Yeah, he looked it up as ounces. I'm assuming because again, four ounces or more. Yeah, it's felony possession, but ten point eight grams, that's nothing. So um, that's the least of his worries when it comes to uh, you know Rasheed Rice. I think the weed possession, although the cops found it in his car. Now. Don't don't go driving and racing sports cars, especially when you're high. All right, uh, it's pretty simple, common sense shit right there. Now back staying with 
Rasheed Rice's Chiefs. Yeah. The Chiefs agree to terms. They see they ain't stopping. The Chiefs went out there. They got Chris Jones. They're still helping their quarterback. They do whatever it takes to keep winning. Yeah. The Chiefs agree to terms with their their own edge rusher Mike Dana on a three year deal. That was today. Another piece of Kansas City's defensive front stays put. He's not the biggest name. He's not a big. He's an average guy. But in their in their situation, they know they know these guys and what their strengths and weaknesses are, and they're keeping the guys. That fit their scheme. That fit what they want. So Mike Dana got a three-year deal worth twenty-four million dollars. I'm saying that's not that's, that's still against their own player, so it's not going to affect the comp picks. But you know that's what that's what uh, Connor McGovern got. I'm sorry, Connor. That's what yeah, Connor McGovern got when went to Buffalo. Yeah, the same similar. Actually, I think it was three years, twenty-one million, and that got us a fifth-round comp pick or sixth round. So my point is, you know, there's still deals being done that affect the comp situation if it's from another team. That's why you're not seeing the Cowboys do anything. I'm just telling you the facts, guys. I mean, if the comp situation, the compensatory picks that Stephen Jones gets is more important than any player that we would want to sign that would help us win a Super Bowl. That's that we sign any good player, we got to pay three years, $24 million to. We're losing a compensatory pick next year, probably a seventh rounder or fifth rounder. That's too much for old Stephen Jones. So just keep that in mind. That's another reason why I like to say these, these numbers because it equates to hey, if someone was to sign him, if someone signed my this very less lesser known Mike Dana Dana to another team. That team would have to lose a comp pick that they earned by losing one of their players. So he got a three-year deal, $24 million from his own Chiefs. Includes $13 million of that guaranteed. So it's really like a year and a half uh, guarantee. It's really a year and a half deal for him. But a good payday for him staying in Kansas City. Another player, a guy we kind of touched on, Kyle Van Noy, uh, gets a two-year deal. Not for much, guys. $9 million, two years, $4.5 million a year. Could hit the comp scenario you ain't seen the cowboys dipping their toes in any of that so he got a two-year deal worth nine million dollars um and incentives of up to a million um per year so he can get up to 10 up to 11 million dollars i guess on the two-year deal and another player signed here the giants they said they re-signed their own again a guy that we had talked about before we had a linebacker unrestricted free agent linebacker isaiah simmons he is now back in New York, they re-signed him. They trade. They got him in a trade from the Cardinals. Let him test free agency, and then they re-signed him back. So he stays in New York. The Giants will see him twice a year. They didn't really do much against us, but he has been coming around. Like hey, in the last the last year or so after the Cardinals trade him to the Giants, right. interior defensive tackle situation. I always am watching about these guys getting signed today. Another re-signing, staying in his team. Right, you seeing a lot of these re-signings. Where's our re-signings? The Panthers today. Resigned defensive tackle, nose tackle, Derek Brown. It's important to note because this kind of puts us where, you know, where are the Cowboys at when it comes to nose tackles, defensive tackles? I always like to see what these guys are getting paid. Derek Brown staying with the Panthers, signing a four year extension, $96 million extension. That's a lot. Four years, $96 million for a nose tackle, $63.1 million guaranteed. Um, this has been confirmed, but this is the crazy thing. The defensive tackle spot, that nose tackle three tech kind of spot there, has exploded over the last year. Chris Jones got a five year deal, one fifty eight million. Christian Wilkinson, four years, one hundred ten million. Justin Matabuki, this is these guys this year right now, four year ninety eight. Quinton Williams, four year ninety six million. Derek Brown just got four year ninety six. Jeffrey Simmons, four year ninety four million. Deron Payne. Four year, ninety million. Dexter Lawrence, four year, ninety million dollars. Leonard Williams, three years, sixty four and a half million dollars. And Javon Hargrave, four years, eighty four million dollars. I'm just trying to say, I think I'm sorry. I think Leonard Williams got three year, eighty four and a half million dollars. These are eight, these top ten guys right now, just over the last year, are all getting eighty four million dollars on three or four year deals, and. You know, $84 million or more, up to $158 million. So the nose tackle, even that's going up in price, up in cost. So, yeah, you know, Jonathan Hank is not going to be $1.3 million anymore. He's going to be $2 million. Too expensive for the Cowboys. Too expensive for the Cowboys. Hmm. And I wanted to add one more guy here. He didn't get a big deal. I don't know what his deal is, and I will report the numbers when it comes through. But they took another guy. One of the, one of the last nose tackles around that I wanted for our Cowboys, Tahir Tart. He's off the board now. And this guy's been floating around, floating around, floating around. He's with the Tennessee Times, with the Houston Texans. Great job as a one-tech nose tackle over center. Can take on double team. We talked about him. The, the fucking Dolphins replaced Christian Wilkinson with Tier Tart for a lot cheaper. Now, I don't know what the numbers are yet. But I'm having a feeling that the Cowboys were not going to pay it if it's over $1.5 million. So Tier Tart 
Signed with the Dolphins. He had eight tackles for loss in only 11 games last year for the Texans and the Titans combined. So he's going to the Dolphins, and they, they got a little bit of a, you know, they went back a bit with Christian Wilkins going back to a tier tart, but they're not paying Christian Wilkins. They're not paying tier tart four years, $110 million. So you got to look at it that way too, right? Now, how about in the trenches on the other side, the left tackle position? We know we've been, we've got to figure out what's going to happen with our left tackle. The Eagles aren't wasting time with, on their side of things. You know why? The Eagles, well, there's better at the front office work than we are. I know some, some Cowboy content creators don't believe that. Trust me, you know what you're talking about. If, you, if you're going to judge it on pro bowlers from the USFL, great. I love our, our, our Will McClay. You know, we have the better Will McClay, but we don't have the better overall you know, front office. That's just yeah. the way it's going to be. The Eagles, they, have, they just signed left tackle Jordan Miliata. Maliata. They reached an agreement on a three-year, $66 million extension that includes $48 million guaranteed and a $20 million signing bonus. This ties Maliata to the Eagles all the way through the 2028 season. Damn. So they got their guy. They solidified their left tackle spot. They're going, you know, you could say, oh, quote, unquote, all. They didn't have that much money to spend this year. They, they get everybody they want. They get whoever they want, and they're going to keep getting who they want. They're going to have to pay these prices off in the future. We know it. Again, it's but really hard it's for the Cowboys it. to keep making the excuses they're making when literally I can name at least five teams that have been in NFC, AFC, or Super Bowls in the last handful of years, and they're all doing these type of aggressive moves that the Cowboys swear up, down, and sideways we just can't make with the same cap. Yeah, I mean, with more cap, we have actually, we could make more. Look, the same cap more in the cap sense room. of, remember, every football team is working with the same base amount right, of right, money. Right. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. how much money they actually have to spend is very different because it's tied up in players and stuff. But holy crap, especially when, yes, you're seeing all these other teams around us take advantage of their quarterback's rookie contracts, loading up their teams with weapons, right? Or bringing in weapons for their, you know, newly minted and signed quarterback. Right, well, it was Mahomes way, a couple of years ago. They still win the Super Bowl. Or the Eagles got the Super Bowl Jalen last Hurts year. Hurts just got paid last year. I know, year. That. I'm just saying, so, Hurts, again, they're still making, the excuse, because they're Cowboys. pushing, because they're, because we know the Cowboys, the clown show, the front office. <sighs> is the, the player is the star? No. The front office is the issue. It, it's the way they're, that, you know, we talk about the scheming of the offensive game plan. Yeah. Has to fit the players. We talk about the scheming of the defensive players. that has to fit the players. But the front office is important how they scheme, how they go about getting new players in this team. And our front office shit the bed again, probably worse than they have in many years. So, look, and they're not saying a lot. Yeah, and Lewis, it's, it's a little bit different. Remember, if you look at, like, the actual amount of his money, but when you look at what he's actually getting paid, I know you've gone over this before, baby. Isn't it closer to, like, 11 or 12? Like, it's a, it's a much lower percentage of our cap, oh, Dax number, okay, right? so, like, well... First off, at this moment, he's hitting $55 million. Well, but that's sure. silly because the Cowboys are going to – There's no. it'd be silly for the Cowboys to the roll. They're letting it roll in, into this $55 million uh, hit on the Cowboys. So fans, like Lewis and others, can say, oh, it's Dak's fault. It's not Dak's fault, brother. It is the Joneses' fault. They can hit the restructure button and make $25 million open up in a second. Not Dak's choice. It's literally Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones, and they're the only ones that can make that move. They haven't done that yet. They chose not to. Now, I can't say that CeeDee Lamb, you know, I know there's, 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 there's negotiations going on, but CeeDee Lamb wants to wait. So that's on him. He wants to wait until Justin Jefferson gets his pay so he can get a million dollars on top of that. So that is not necessarily the Jones's fault, but the Micah Parsons situation we're going to talk about feels like it's the Joneses negotiating tactics. They've been doing this for years. We've known this. And they always paint the players as the bad guys and the owners as the poor. We're the poor people. We're the poor owners. We don't have the money. Bullshit. They have the money. They never used the money when Dak was a low on the cap hit. I'm talking about in his third and fourth and fifth years. When I'm talking about, you know, when he gave him the, the one-year deal, we still never used any of that money. That we after the first two years of his contract, we had Dak and I mean uh, not Dak, but Romo and 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 and, uh, and Des Bryant. I have a great night, skeptical. Much love. Yes, to you. peace out, skeptical. Appreciate you. But like those, are what I'm trying to say, like like the Cowboys didn't do anything then. They got Nolan Carroll from the Eagles. That was our big move when we had some money. That's crap. He was cut two weeks into the season. That's the front office. And Will McClay, I don't blame him because he's got to get. He's they they tell him you got two million dollars. Get four players. <laughs> you know. I mean, Will like McClay is doing the best he can. With twenty dollars in your pocket, and someone saying, "Go throw a dinner party." Exactly. Like, okay. You just everyone's eating ramen. It's only, it's only, uh, Will McClay is going to make mistakes when you give him nothing to work with. And he's going to hit some big ones, which is incredible, just for him to be able to do that. So this is all about the front office, not about Dak. 
I'm Dak, I, he's hitting the whatever he's hitting the cap for is bullshit because it's first of all it's 240 million and he's getting 55 so it's already not even 25 percent it's like 20 percent but even with the 20 percent when you hit restructure it's like 10 percent let's stop bitching about Dak's contract nothing to do with this shit it's about the owners and I say owners because it's Jerry Jones with the face and Stephen Jones with the with the with the, with the contracts that re, and the negotiating tactics that are fucking pussified they're just pussy so look this is an example of what I'm trying to say to you guys. We don't sign our guys early enough. When you when the Cowboys are set on somebody, you sign them. You wait an extra year, then you bitch about the cap, and you're an idiot. Because you knew the money was going to go up for quarterback, or for offensive lineman, or for this one, or for that position. So when you look at offensive linemen, the Eagles said, you know what, let's pay this three-year, $66 million extension. Let's do that. Because we'll lock up Maliata until 2028, and we are set, and we don't have to sit here and play games of watching what is the offensive line market next year and the year after that as the money balloons up up and away so they went the right route they were set on the guy you go the cowboys were set on dak years ago they were set on dak and they still waited and waited and waited and waited yep. and it cost us 40 million now we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and it's going to cost more because not dak that's the quarterback market and that's jones's waiting too long if they're set do it if they're not then make plan b they didn't do plan b they still yeah. have not done plan b so you it's on the Joneses. Rotten fruit from the tree. You got to pick it when it's ripe. Exactly, but you can't do it if the scheme is wrong for the for the coaches. If the players are wrong for the for the scheme, and if the front office is constantly fucking over the coaches and the players, it's foundational, Lewis. It's foundational. Players are part of it because the ownership is the main issue. It trickles down. Yeah, so, anyways, don't the player hit the game. Listen, the game. The players make mistakes, but if you got. If you had your front office stay away from this shit, we'd have better chances to win games. Dak would look better. Our t- our offense would look better. Our defense, everything would look better. The players would look better if we had some accountability from the top. There is no accountability with Jerry Jones. He don't fire himself. So how is it going to be accountability anywhere else? That's on the Joneses. Set that's that point game match. Anyways, here's the thing, guys, or set game match. Maliata now with that deal. All right, he's getting twenty two million per year average. Mm-hmm. Puts them only behind Laramie Tunsil, Trent Williams, and Andrew Thomas among the highest NFL paid to offensive tackles. Extending a key player a year ahead of when he's supposed to, like if we had done that with CD last year, will no doubt give that team flexibility against the cap in the following years. That's how the Cowboys are fucking up the money. CD Lamb, if they had given him a little more, let's say even a little more than they should have given him last year. Yeah. Right now, Justin Jefferson will be signed for a little more than CD Lamb, which would be what CD is going to be signed for now, or more than that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And the money spent, like you push that money down the line, it's worth more now. It's worth a lot more now. We've talked about. I'm not going into it again. It's just it's just basic economics and facts. So the more you wait, the worse it is. The Eagles said we like this. We 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 are are trusting this player. So let's just get him signed now rather than wait till his contract year next year. Cowboys, no, no, no. They have to play games, negotiate, and then they get fucked because they pay it. And then they end up getting the players are, are not like they're not in love with the way this cowboy organization, you know, repays their their guys. They gotta fight tooth and nail right? for something that the Joneses don't really negotiate and bullshit them and make them look like the bad guy, and then they give them the money at the end anyways. They don't save any money to the Cowboys in their negotiation tactics. It is just bad business. A bad group of front office businessmen up there with Steven and Jerry Jones. Multi-year contracts the Eagles have handed out this offseason. A team that had hardly any salary cap. Maliata, three years, $66 million. Guard, Landon Dickerson. See, they getting their offensive line set. Landon Dickerson, four years, $84 million. Saquon Barkley from the Giants, they got him. Three years, $37.7 million. I'm not saying it's a great move. I'm just saying they're making moves. Bruce Huff, a best pass rusher there for the Jets. Three years, $51 million. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, three years, $27 million. That's called, hey, we're going to try going all in, try to win a Super Bowl. The Cowboys are saying, put it on Dak's shoulders, and we'll lose this year. Who cares? Who cares? He, it doesn't and matter. And they do it in the most interesting way, too, because, again, when you hear what they're saying, they're not saying, hey, we're dumping all these problems on Dak. We're saying, we think 
Dak can get it done. We think Dak is strong enough to carry this team to where he needs to go. You know, well, they, see, it, it, I'm just saying, like, it's again, it's that same language that on one hand is obviously sounds like they're behind their quarterback. But if you, I'm just saying, like, if you listen to their specific comments, it is pretty clear that they're obviously, you know, not just saying Dak can do it, but they're putting that expectation of, can you do it, Dak? You know, it's, it's, it's that little unspoken part. See, the thing is, you know, the same way they talk about McCarthy, I, the same way that McCarthy kind of says things that we know. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was gonna. I muted myself because I was gonna say that. I, I, I understand. I agree with what you're saying. But the Joneses, they say that Dak can do it, right? Mm-hmm. And they say let's take away weapons from Dak or not add any weapons for Dak and let weapons go away. This has happened a couple of times already. When Dak had his very cheap contract, you know what the Joneses? You know what the Cowboys' um, receiving core was? It was yeah. Terrence Williams. It was Beasley. It was uh, who was the other scrub we got? Allen Hurts. Allen Hurts. We had, you know, four or five second, third, and fourth stringers for Dak Prescott. A broken offensive line, and then we said, Dak, Dak, go do it. And Dak, we got to the playoffs that year, won a playoff game. But I'm just saying, my point is that you don't. Dak is not Joe Montana or Dan Marino or you know Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers. He's not Mahomes. He's that he, he's a level behind that, and so you got to give him pieces. And if you can't, if, if you got to take away pieces, say Dak, you're gonna be delusional. Say Dak, it's all on you because we're paying you 50, 60 million. Then you're stupid, and then it's stupid one way or the other. Dak is not that quarterback. If you're gonna pay him that money, you gotta get him. You gotta if you're gonna put it on him. You gotta get him help. Yeah, if the and that's Jerry the way it's always gonna be. And Matthew Stafford's of the world, they get can help. go out there and and show up in Super Bowls and win Super yeah, Bowls. and they get help from their front offices. And I see Lewis you saying see a lot of these teams that we're talking about, they'll, they'll be in trouble in a couple of years. Bullshit. You know why I know this? I mean, they'll be in some trouble, but it ain't going to be the big trouble you're thinking because the cap is going up $40 million a year. And go back a couple of years ago. Wait, let me think. Yeah, uh, five years ago, the Eagles won a Super Bowl with the same tactic with Howie Roseman. Um, wait, let me go back. Oh, yeah, the, the Rams made, uh, and they lost Super Bowl recently with a new team, the Eagles. And then they go back with the Rams, who went all in, and they got to the Super Bowl, lost uh, like by three to the Patriots in the Super Bowl with one quarterback, switched it up. That was with Goff, switched it up with, with Stafford, and they won a Super Bowl against Joe Burrow and the Bengals. So that's when you, go, at least they're trying to go all in. What we're going to do is another 27 years of tippy-toeing over the line and not being aggressive and then taking L's. For another 27 years, 28 years, 29 years. Is that what you guys want? Because we need to take chances and take a couple bad years. Take chances, take a couple bad years. And when I say bad years, yeah. Yeah, it's not. you're not going to make the playoffs that year. Boo-hoo. But then the next year, back in the running. You see what I'm saying? So to me, that's a smarter move. Be aggressive. Throw that money around and make the moves to help your team, your coaches, your scheme, and your players. Yeah, this yeah. front office don't do it. They only do things that their way, stubbornly. Mm. And Jerry Jones basically said it, guys. Factually, he said this. He'd rather lose his way than win somebody else's way. The proof is Jimmy Johnson. I'll leave it there. Now. Yeah, we don't even need that proof. He has straight up said this, basically. Yep. So, you know, take fact, it from the horse's mouth. Facts are facts. I mean, he said all in, and he don't even know what he's talking about. So what about some of the other players? One that worked out for us not signing, which was messed up by the Cowboys themselves, was Randy Gregory's signing a couple of years ago. But yep. uh, we went to the Broncos, and they blew that one. Cowboys would have blown it. The Cowboys were going to pay it. They just took out that voided uh, thing on weed. So, so in typical he didn't Cowboy sign fashion, <laughs> we literally got lucky and stumbled yeah. ass backwards. Yeah, it wasn't something yeah. that worked out for us. It wasn't, tried. Yeah, it wasn't a great move by the front office. The front office was dying to get Randy Gregory back. And the only reason they ain't going to back is they snuck in there that voided contract if he gets found with weed. And he said, you know what? The Broncos give me the same deal without that. I'm going to the Broncos. The Cowboys were pissed about that, the front office. And we got lucky because he got cut. Went to the Niners. Was not that good. Free agent again. And where did he sign the Buccaneers? I found out how much he got paid. We talked about this the other day. He got signed by the Bucks. A guy who was basically practice squad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he got assigned to a $3 million base contract, a one-year deal. $3 million. And he has the avail- ability to get $5 million. So they're still, there's teams still willing to pay f- basically $5 million for Randy Gregory a year. I just don't, I mean, now, why are the Joneses around on this one? They wanted him so bad a couple years ago for $20 million or $15 million. Now they don't want him for, for less than five. million? I'm just saying, I don't want him either. But I'm just saying, this is the front office fuckery of clown show, we call it. Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones. Now, another guy you guys love, 
who I've been telling you, calm down about Lael Collins. Lael Collins got signed. He was a free agent. The Cowboys never re-signed him. Yeah. He got signed with the Buffalo Bills. That. Collins has started 86 games in seven years with the Cowboys and, of course, with the Bengals. It is a one-year deal. What's the numbers? This guy was a practice squad guy for our team last year, and no one picked him up off our practice squad. Cowboys didn't re-sign him, I believe, because they didn't think he was ready to go. And if he was, he was not going to be a starter anyway. Like some of you guys are like, we could get Lil Collins. He'll start. No, he won't. But now he definitely won't for us. He's with the Bills as a backup, I'm yeah. assuming, getting a one-year deal worth up to $6.25 million? That's, that's a lot. A lot. Of, I was going to say, that's a lot more than I expected. That's a lot of money for somebody who cannot be trusted, keeping him in shape, keeping his weight down, keeping himself from injuries, keeping himself from trying to drug, from, from, from uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know what is that called when you're trying to bribe the uh, the drug was it the 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 drug test the, the, he was trying to drug uh, yeah, pay off bri- the drug yeah, tester the, the guy bribe the drug uh, tester yeah right like one of those uh, surprise drug tests yeah. the NFL does try to he bribe like, them Yo, if I slip you a twenty can we call <laughs> well, it even he whatever the, he was joking around but whatever it was it was enough for him to get suspended for so all these things and he signed with the Bills for six point two five million I guess I would too if I was him and I was a practice squad player last year like months ago so. Lyle Collins has had at least one more team looking after him to see to maybe sign him. There was at least one more team. Okay. But we don't know who that team is. I don't know if it was the Cowboys or not. It probably was. But he chose Buffalo with the hopes of trying to win a Super Bowl. So maybe he feels the Cowboys are all out. So he's like, let me go to Buffalo. Either way, the Cowboys are not going to sign him for 6.25. Guarantee you guys that would not have happened with the Cowboys. So I was wondering if the Cowboys were eventually going to bring him back. They're probably going to wait everything go by and then just sho- shove him into the you know, practice squad again. I was with my thought. But now that he's gone for six, almost $6.5 million to Buffalo, obviously he's not coming back. But the Cowboys had enough of time to look at him and see, you know, at the time in the practice squad, you know, I'm glad he's back getting another shot. But I'm just saying that I don't think the Cowboys had trusted him to be a viable piece for any money except for practice squad. So the Bills are rolling the dice on him. I guess they felt they liked McGovern last year. So let's roll with uh, another offensive lineman from a couple years back in Lael Collins. Either way, I'm not upset about Lael going away for $6.25 million. You can have him. Anybody, any thoughts on that? Yeah. Maybe for El you? Cool or? said, Lael Collins is so lucky he hit the genetic lottery when he was born because he's such <laughs> a sack of crap. No way he gets a job making six figures doing anything else in his life. And let's be real. <laughs> Neither will any of us, for the most part, statistically speaking. But, yeah, he is very lucky. And it is frustrating to see because he's been given so many opportunities, so many chances. And from everything we've heard about him behind the scenes, he's never really had the work ethic to get himself to that level. So along with the injuries and everything else, maybe his mindset's changed. He supposedly was talking a little different after this last injury. But... You know, but let's hope that six point something million dollars the doesn't thing, end up biting him in the ass. The one thing that we do know that is that uh, you know that's one of Dak's biggest friends. Could have kept him on here again. You know, maybe that's why they brought him in last year. Cowboys said not this year. You have no friends, Dak. You have no friends anymore here in Dallas. It seems like that's what the front office is kind no, of saying. I, I think a last bit. year it's pretty easy and simple to understand why the Cowboys brought him back. They just wanted someone who was semi familiar with. Them, yeah. their team, their organization. An emergency to have situation. An emergency yeah. in case of you know, uh, injury, break the yeah. glass here. Yeah. Put him through injury. there. So, yeah. but yeah, it doesn't seem like you said the fact that we didn't even try to bring him back. Then again, we didn't even try to bring back Hankins, and he yeah. was like less than two million dollars <laughs> or something like that. So. Hankins, yeah, Hankins was max at two point zero five, so basically two million dollars, and he was like he was like guaranteed like one point three million or one point seven. So hard million. to really say. Yeah, that was silly. What? So silly. Yeah. But let me let me keep it going because we had other people talk about issues when it comes to free agency that are somewhere else now. Like Derrick Henry ah. from the Ravens. And he, I know he, we kind of touched on some of what he said, but he was interviewed again yesterday, I think. And he said he wanted to sign with the Cowboys in free agency. What did the Joneses do about this to try to bring in somebody who want, probably would have probably played for less in Dallas than play with the Ravens in Baltimore and Derrick Henry. It what sounds is like some Jada Will Smith Tupac thing. Like, <laughs> like. Well, I want to hear Derrick. What did Derrick Henry say about? Did he really want to play in Dallas? Or he just no. bull and smoke. He said, "I knew once free agency started that I wanted to work something out with the Ravens if we could, 
even though I'm living in Dallas and Dallas being a perfect situation as well, because we live there, we ain't got to move. But at the same time, the Ravens and the history of it, talking to Ray Lewis at the Pro Bowl and his passion about the organization, his impact there and how he talked about it. I was like, man, if I'm not in Tennessee or I don't go to Dallas, I'd love to be a Raven. You can see what he was thinking about, you know, his plan B. You know, Cowboys have plan A, nothing yeah. else. At least he had plan A, stay with Tennessee, plan B. Cowboys, Plan C, Ravens. Yeah, and he even straight up said it. Staying with the Cowboys or signing with the Cowboys would have been a, quote, perfect situation. Editing in there, they ain't holla at me at all. Meaning the Cowboy front office. It would have been crazy. I thought it'd been some type of reach out there, some type of talks or whatever. They never reached out, you know what I'm saying? I don't really know too much about their organization. All I know is what I hear. Hmm. I was talking to my agent. They weren't really interested. It is what it is. Mm. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be where I'm going to be. And I feel like Baltimore was the perfect spot. So the Cowboy front office, just so you guys know, for, for you know whatever his number was, it was definitely too much for the Cowboys to pay. But they didn't even reach out to him. Maybe they knew it was going to be too high. But they didn't even, again. They didn't even bother giving him a call. According to him, he heard the Cowboys were interested, but that there was no interest shown. So it's the... You know, players use the star to blow to try to get the blow up on on their contracts and get a big deal. Cowboys might want me, but you know the Cowboys they they say to the public, yeah, we like this guy, that guy, but in, but privately they they don't do their due diligence. You'll hear Stephen Jones saying, "We did our due diligence on Derrick Henry." Yeah, Derrick Henry was uh, is obviously being genuine when he says. Yeah. I would have loved to come to Dallas. I wish they would have called. It sounds yeah. like had we called could have got something and made there. similar terms to the Ravens or heck, even something cheaper, he might have genuinely considered it hmm. and chosen us. Could have. We'll never know now. It's That's come and gone now, mm. right? So when you look at this front office, now I'm going to take them out the way for a second. <clears throat> I want to bring up the last kind of non, um, non-direct cowboy thing but this was a the stefan where is he is he side oh, lee side here. Oh, of course he's he loving this offseason but so so what happened stefan Diggs. we know the trade i'm gonna go through the change that happened today or yesterday i think it was yesterday but number one i want to say that stefan Diggs paid a hundred thousand dollars today to wear number one. Oh damn yeah jersey number one for the houston texans new texas wide receiver stefan Diggs pays teammate jimmy ward a one million dollar. Oh, sorry, a hundred thousand dollars to secure his old college number after this trade from Buffalo to Houston. So that's a lot of money right there to throw out. But you know he's doing it. While I think I'm pretty sure um, he's got to buy out also all his. Well, actually, no. I'm sorry. He's in a new team, so we don't have to buy anything now. That's a good sure, point. There's yeah. no backstop. Yeah, a hundred thousand dollars is actually cheaper than a buyout. You know, it's going to cost yeah, you a million dollars, right? You know, so. Stefan's yeah. jerseys would have been a know, lot. probably more than someone else's. Yeah. If he had changed, if Stefan Diggs had changed to number one, he went to buy out all his number 14s in Buffalo while he was in Buffalo. So he just said, fuck it. I'll ride out the 14th. I'm out of here. When I go to a new place, I'll pay the guy $100,000 for the, for the number. But it was supposed to be three more years, right? He had a three-year deal left. Uh-uh-uh. As part of this Buffalo-Houston trade, the Texans wiped out. This was written in the contra- in, in the trade. He and, and Diggs knew this that they were going to wipe out the last three years of Diggs's contract, giving him the ability to become a free agent again after the twenty twenty four season. So now he go out there and hit the jackpot again yeah. instead of being guaranteed like you know the nineteen eighteen million dollars he was going to be getting. So in this deal, by the way, the Texans also took. The three point five million dollars that was still guaranteed to Trayvon, I mean Trayvon, to Stefan Diggs next year, mm-hmm. that was still three and a half million dollars guaranteed next year. They had to pay that. They said no, we'll pay it now. Add it to his numbers now. So he was at what? He was like at nineteen million. Now he's at twenty two point five two million dollars for this year. And again, this this is a raise for him. He gets a three million dollar, basically a three million dollar, three and a half million dollar raise in guaranteed money for this year, but no more money from here on out. And he has to earn the rest of it is what it comes down to. So if Diggs plays the way he wants to, the way Houston expects him to, he'll hit the free agent market with the ability to make the, the same or more money. Maybe with Houston, maybe somewhere else. If they go somewhere else, I don't know. I think, there's, I think Houston loses the chance to use the comp pick for him. Like they get a comp pick back. Okay. Because of the way his contract was kind of redone. But the thing is that Houston still anticipates to push Stefan Diggs to the best version of himself with this deal. 
So both sides agree to this. Essentially, what happens now with this trade, is not, it's not as good as it first looked, Eastside. At least not if I was a Houston fan, it don't look as good. Yeah, Houston did put themselves in a weird situation because, yeah, they're putting Stefan's feet to the fire, but they just spent a second round pick right. doing that, which means they can, you know, they can bluff all they want. But they're either going to, one, let him, you know, decide that they don't want to hold on to him and they just spent a whole second round pick on a player one year rental. Or and, two, tw- and 23 and 22 and a half million dollars on him. Or two, they ended up doing this to sign him anyway. And that might, you know, and if he obviously has the type of year that they're expecting and have him coming back, well, that might not work out as well for their pocketbook at that point. Very good points on both sides. But I'll say this when you look at it, Houston essentially now, when you look at the trade, what it looks like now, it's not just, you know, Stefan Diggs, the remaining part of his contract and the last three years of his contract. It's also, it's, it's switched around. It's, a lot of that stuff is now taken out. So Houston now traded a second round pick to secure Stefan Diggs for one year. That's what we, that's what they did. That's what the, te- the Texans said, you give up a second rounder and we get a one year player. Stefan Diggs guaranteed one year as a receiver. So now, again, Diggs has an added incentive to give the Texans everything he's got this year, right now, on and off the field. Because if he does good, they'll keep him in, in Texas. They'll keep him in Houston. Yeah. Or he'll go somewhere else, and you know he'll make his money there. Either way. Yeah, he's, he's either staying in Houston or advertising the goods. Exactly. He is now in a position to have the ability to negotiate another truly, you know, another true contract, but a long-term a long-term contract, yeah. not a one-year deal, a prove-it deal. He's going to prove it deal for $22.5 million. And it's costing that for the Houston Texans and a second round pick. Now they do get a fifth and sixth rounder back. Okay. So they got a little a little comfort there, but they're losing a high powered second yeah, round pick. Uh, hard to compare, so, but yeah. but it is something. It's something back. So that's why the way this whole thing broke down. And baby, the biggest thing about this story, sorry, Elise side, it's not about Stefan Diggs. It's, a, it's a how it affects the Dallas Cowboys in the draft. All right, so what does this mean for us? Then? Yes, and guys, I want you to hear closely because this actually, that's why I say draft trade. Cowboy question Jason. mark, question mark. Why do I say draft trade possible here? Because of this move by the Bills. The Bills are wide receiverless. Will McClay, time to do your magic. Wide open for a wide receiver? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Well, that's last year. We don't want to see that. We want to get better ones. But you look at this year's draft picks. See Will McClay running the show when he's allowed to. The Cowboys will now have a trade back option. We can trade back with the Buffalo Bills after the Stefan Diggs blockbuster deal. Let me explain to you guys how this works. Stefan Diggs, I don't really care much about the player. He took a little step back with Buffalo last year. You know, he's still, you know, since joining Buffalo, he ranks first among receivers. And fourth in receiving yards and fourth in touchdown catches. So even had a bad year last year overall. Still a fantastic player. We'll see how he does in Houston. But the Bills, they didn't just lose their number one guy. The Bills also lost their number two guy. Oh. Gabe Davis in free agency. Davis scored, he produced 747 yards receiving as a number two. And seven touchdown catches. That's a lot of production you're losing there. With your number one and number two receivers gone. Yeah, if it was just one or the other, it's one thing. Yeah. But to lose both of them, that's uh. <laughs> so now, they, the, the Bills have the 28th pick of the draft. Four behind us. There's no doubt in anyone's mind. Only analysts, I guess they can go anywhere they want. But, you know, they're going for a receiver in the draft. That's their, that's their target, it sounds like. And this gives the Cowboys, I'd say Jerry and Steven, but I don't want to jinx it. It gives Will McClay and the front office a chance to truly... Do something with this, with this opportunity here. You know what I mean. So again, the, the Buffalo Bills, without a, a, a number one or a number two receiver, with a twenty eighth overall pick. It sounds like the Buffalo Bills are going to be gung ho about a freaking receiver. But that again, the Cowboys now could either trade back to twenty eight with the Bills, so the Bills would jump a lot of the teams in between the Buffalo Bills and us. Might be looking for a top receiver, so that's where now is we have some leverage here. If we were to trade back to the twenty eighth pick, Pride can pick up at least at least a third round pick, at least another third round pick. So if we take a step, if we take a trade back of four or five spots, we get an extra third round pick. 
that is is very big in my mind, and I would definitely make that move. I think in my in my in my mind of things, I would that's the way I would do that. And again, we could also trade even back maybe a little farther with a team that maybe wants to jump ahead of Buffalo for a team that maybe needs a wide receiver, even in the second round, right? Early second round. So, you know, 34th pick, we get that, and we get a second rounder on top of that. We might get two second rounders. You know what I'm saying? A combo like that, dropping back. You can drop back a little farther and still, you know, have a team like, for instance, the Ravens at 30th. The Chiefs at thirty second, they would be teams that would want to jump the Bills for a wide for receiver. Picks? Like, why would the Bills? Like, why it would interest the Bills to want to jump up? Like, just such a small little jump in well, the draft. Well, the, the, the teams in front of them, like Packers and a couple others, would be receiver needy kind of teams. But it's not just that. It's not just the Bills that need a receiver. It's the teams behind the Bills, like the Ravens that need a receiver, like the Chiefs at the thirtieth and thirty second picks. So it's not just the Bills going back twenty eighth. We can go back to the 30th, drop six back, or drop, you know, eight back, go to 32nd, and the farther back we go, obviously the better, you know, we either get a a better third round pick or a better second round pick. So to me, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it opens up an option now, a trade option with receiver needy teams like the Chiefs, the Ravens, and the Bills. We're stuck in no man's land with 24th pick. And again, JPJ might be there and uh, Barton Graham might be there. But one of those guys will be there if we trade back, probably. And that's what I'm saying. So if the I'm Cowboys. I'm also going to say no. the thing that we all know, depressing as it is, but with the lack of free agent moves from the Cowboys, mm. we need this draft to have some more oomph. And trading back in the first gives us very likely. At least one or two more picks that will be able to have an impact yeah, immediately. this year in a way that the Cowboys would be willing to tolerate. Yeah. Right? And by that, I do mean, yeah, like, we're obviously not going to sign these free agents. Someone has to fucking do it. Better be a yeah. rookie. Listen, we'll sign free agents after the draft. We'll sign a couple guys, a name or two that's old. We'll sign some low level veterans. And that'll be our depth, but yeah, yeah like more uh, VBS, yeah, maybe VSBs, VSB, there yeah, veteran salary benefit deals. Way. But the point is, is that we drop back a couple picks, still got an offensive lineman, pick up an extra third. Now you can, now you have a much better field day there, going linebacker, going running back, going receiver, going you know another offensive lineman. You have a lot of a lot of options now, and basically almost the top hundred picks. I would drop back, get still get the lineman, and we're still good to go. So to me. No harm in moving back, you know, four to six spots and getting a third or second round pick as well. That would be the thing I would do. Front office, well, McClay is willing to do some magic if you let him. But the front, front, front office, they're still the clown show. And they'll probably stop them from doing a lot of things, unfortunately. So it's up to what Jerry and Steven want to do about this. Baby, what do you think? I got to step away for a moment, but what do you think about this? And what does the chat think about it? I want to know what you think first. You hit me up with the chat as well after that. I mean, like I said, we are basically forced into exactly the type of situation that I'm guessing Jerry and Steven were probably hoping and anticipating once they realized where we were going to be drafting, Right. I guess the best case scenario is that one of these teams decides to do some business with us. And, and like a few comments here saying in the chat, you know, uh, Lewis said, it, you know, getting three, you know, getting, let's say, four picks in the top hundred, that could have much more of an impact than other moves the Cowboys make. Because let's be real, if the Cowboys do somehow all of a sudden decide to change their minds and get a free agent, not exactly going to spend the big bucks or, or make the type of, let's, be real necessary moves to actually have that free agent be worth the move so at that point we might as well heavily invest and and over invest or or at least be open to hearing what possibilities can happen in the draft again I I know Mr. MCF is still very bothered and I can't remember what player it was uh, but it was some uh, player that Stephen Jones was called about he didn't even know who the player was and basically just completely ignored the trade possibility there just because he's like i don't even know who the fuck you're talking about so it, it, it is again a tricky one only because of this and i know we and mr mcf will, will share his thoughts more here if it seems like we are very obviously uh targeting an offensive lineman in the first round does dropping back in the draft mean that we don't get 
the number one guy at the top of our list because that to me is a little bit of a factor depending on how much of a difference there is between the number one and number two guy. I'm going to assume that whoever really is at the top of our draft board will probably be picked even by the time it gets the 24th pick in the first round. So no matter what, it looks like, again, where we're drafting, we're already having to settle a little bit. So now John Syme seem, hopefully I'm saying that right, saying I'm torn up dropping back too terribly far in the draft. It would have to be here in real time for me to actually say how I feel about draft trading. It just depends on what it is. And again, that's why I say it is hard to speculate because it is an in-the-moment decision. Uh, but overall, if these were the general terms, I have to admit that I would probably trade back. And it has less to do almost with the terms themselves. And like I said, it was my, my original point. When it comes to the way that the Cowboys are doing things, we are forced to heavily invest with the draft. So having more draft picks is is less of a desire and more of a necessity at this point, the way the Cowboys yeah. are moving. Yeah. So Sorry, I missed El Cool said, Will McClay has had some real flops. He's like the Wizard in the Wizard of Oz. He seems invincible until you look behind the curtain. And again, El Cool, Mr. MCF doesn't quite agree with that thought process. I tend to agree a little bit more with you although not fully um but i do agree that the parameters that the cowboys give will mcclay to look for when it comes to the types of players they're looking for and stuff like what is he supposed to do if the cowboys well, say look for offensive linemen that are this this and this will mcclay is gonna do that and you gotta remember a couple of things about will mcclay when it comes to free agency even though he helps out it's he has no choice on that it's up to the joneses when it comes to the draft I do agree that, you know, Will McClay has had some issues. Listen, you know what the issue he had? You know what he pushed for? Mozzie Smith. Mm. Right now, not working out too well. But he's going off of what Dan Quinn has asked for. He's going off of what the Jones has said. You know, we finally are looking at a nose tackle. Let's grab one. So, to me, I think it's like, you know, he got a chance to do something. He he, he has made his mistakes as well. But, guys, I'm going to tell you this. If you take away, if, okay, you're gonna have the clown show here no matter what. But if you take away, if we took away Will McClay, we'd be like a four or five win season, a five win team. Without Will McClay, I'll take the couple of flops. Not all his fault, by the way. You could look at Taco. You could look at T- uh, Tristan Hill. These are not his faults. These are I the think, coaching I faults. I think both things can be true. It's Will a, McClay, like this team would be nothing without Will McClay, and we desperately need him right and we now. We could While be better. Pointing out if we had some front office mis- help. Guess what? Those <laughs> mistakes that Will McClay made maybe wouldn't be felt as deeply right. or as hard if our team if our again, front office didn't hinge everything right. on these rookie. If picks. the front office actually said, "Let's go grab," let's do some of those Eagle moves they made, or the Rams move that were made, or if, if the Niners moves, if we made some of those moves. Will McClay can make a mistake or two, and we would have, it, we would be fine. We would, we would not miss a beat. Now everything's be on the front. Yeah, we're in a completely different situation. Anyways, I'm sick of sick of looking at those clowns. That's the way. Oh, we're gonna be looking at them again. That's the way. We're gonna get back to the draft. There's a couple guys I do want to mention in this draft. I guess I can do that first. Um, but huh, you know, it's too. Actually, there's too much stuff. Actually, I'll wait for that. There is something we have to do before you move on to the next thing. Okay. Take a second to hit like, yes. subscribe, yes. hit that notification bell, yes. follow us anywhere and everywhere, guys, at My Cowboys Family. Hop in the Discord link for that. It's in the description box down below. And, of mm-hmm. course, uh, I said follow us on all social media, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at my okay, Cowboys so Family. Whoopsie. So then, yeah, there you go. That was it. <laughs> now, on my front cover here, my thumbnail, it's a, you know, I have a, I have a picture here of Micah Parsons. And we talked about Dak a little bit, talked about uh, uh, C. Lamb's contract a little bit. But this is, is there a split going on here? Is there a true split between front office and players, specifically Micah Parsons? And the reason I'm saying that is because now we're hearing some some room. So this is coming from their, from, from the 105.3 The Fan and their news sources when it comes to, you know, our star defensive edge rusher that, that right now is eligible for a contract. All of a sudden... We're hearing there might be some some issues going on. Well, just so you guys remember, Micah Parsons in 2023 had 106 total pressures. That's first amongst all defensive players in the NFL. He also had a 24.2% pass rush win rate. That is number two amongst all defensive players in the NFL. And then you had him with 14 sacks last year. That is sixth 
amongst all defensive players in the NFL. So, what's going on here, right? Micah, there's word that Micah Parsons, quote unquote, behavior hmm. is starting to wear thin with this front office at the star. Hmm. So this was listen. There was a hypothetical conversation on one. Listen, I never. That's why you don't hear me talking too much about the draft until now. This this month coming up, we're gonna have a lot more draft talk as we narrow down some some players that are realistic. Not go. I'm not gonna be like other content creators and go through 87 different you know players at each position because I don't give a fuck about these players. I give a fuck about the ones that wear that star in their helmet. So I want to know what's the real picks that are possible here. I'm not. Gonna, I played the game in the past this year. Taking it a little more easy here. We'll, we'll let the, the info come to us. But the the conversation on 105 through the fan was another hypothetical about, well, what is Micah Parsons' trade value if the Cowboys elect to rebuild after this season? And it was Shan Sheriff that kind of spoke about what he's hearing, what he's hearing inside of the team's walls okay. about Micah Parsons. So this is not again. This is again. This is a Shan Sheriff. So he's not like uh, proof, but he is at the, the star, and he does have some access. So he spoke to people about what he's hearing about Parsons, and what they think that are the ones that are closer working with the situation. So what did he say specifically? Oh, why? Why are things wearing thin? Why the front office? Where? Why are they saying? You know, we kind of had enough of Micah all of a sudden. When his contract is, is is able to be signed now, a new contract. So what what's being said by Shan Sheriff about what the front office and what the what is being said around the star at the facility about Micah Parsons? I've heard from way too many people this off season. I'm talking about at least four different people that have told them that Micah has worn thin there. I don't know how much is true and how much it actually hurts his reputation. I don't know whether this is the behavior of a typical superstar. I don't know how damaging it is. But all I do know is this. I've heard from way too many people that if Micah Parsons was out of there, there would be a decent amount of people inside the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief. Wow. That, to me, is mind-blowing to me. A player of his caliber, they have an issue with him now, all of a sudden needing a contract. Now that we're talking contract from Micah, now they don't want him there? There's people that don't want him there. So going, I'm, I'm going to keep going because earlier this offseason, former Cowboy wide receiver Jesse Holly said that Micah Parsons is the most, quote, the most selfish player on the Cowboys team because he didn't want to play linebacker, only wants to be great for Micah. Guys, I mean, again, Micah Parsons then took to his podcast and addressed Holly's criticism on the edge. That's, his, that's Micah Parsons' podcast saying that he's not responsible for calling the plays, and he, quote, I've even told multiple players and coaches that I'm fine playing linebacker in the playoffs if that's what you want me to do. I just want to win. We actually have that short up there of, my, of Micah saying it. So I think Micah is about, of course, always been trying to be the best he can be, but he wants to win a Super Bowl. You can see it. He wants to win, and he wants his team to win. That's my belief. That's my opinion. Now, you want to trade him, that's a whole different discussion. But I'm just saying, like, some people like Jesse Holly are saying he's the most selfish player. I mean, it just sounds like Jesse Holly's a little bit, you know, a little, little butthurt. But the point is... He's one of the few players on this team that I generally, down in my heart, believe that he wants to win. Yeah, I do. Every and We've seen a lot of Not examples of that. Not just the paycheck, yeah. you know? But listen, Micah has taken a lot of... See, the thing I think is maybe some of the issues is his podcast shit. We're all tired of that. We're tired of the talking stuff on the podcast. A lot of criticism from the media members who cover the Cowboys... You know, were were bestowed on him. Were attacked. He was attacked after the lock. You know, after the loss of the Packers, he left the locker room. Didn't speak with anybody. Mm. And he addressed the team's poor performance. He he did have an opportunity to visit with the media the following day when they were clearing out the locker rooms, but he did not make himself available to the media. Mm. So we know he was, he was a little bit pissed off about this loss. Was it about him though? Or was it about the loss of of our team in an embarrassing way? Because that's what I felt it was more about, more than a personal thing for Bica. But the thing is, is it sounds like he chose to remove himself rather than maybe say something he would blow regret. The fuck up in yeah. that moment. I think being real. I agree. I think he would have said, you know, my fucking teammates could have played better, my coaches could have coached better. I fucking Jerry, better. I could have played better, and Jerry Jones could have got some better people in here. I don't know what he would have said, but after all was said and done, guys, I just want to reiterate: this is the way the Cowboys front office negotiates. So I don't whether he's traded or not is one thing, but they're put. They're, they're this is what they do to Dak, to Demarcus Lawrence, to Zach Martin. To, to Zeke. They did this to every single player. They had to play 
pay big money to, they talk badly about them. They paint them in a certain light, whether they're money grubby, grubbing, or they're selfish, or they only care about themselves, or the money. When in the reality, the only people that really truly, I mean, everybody cares about the money, but the people who care the most about the money are the Joneses, by far over everybody. So it's funny because then after all this stuff came out, you know who else spoke about this? Another family member coming out speaking. And this time it was, again, a fellow we know, the brother of Micah Parsons, Terrence Parsons Jr. Terrence Parsons Jr. had a bunch of laughing emoji faces saying this, quote, man, just wait until that contract comes through. That boy not going nowhere. Cowboys know better. Hmm. So from the Cowboys side, uh, you know, it's like we're going to play these negotiation games. But from Micah and his family side, he's getting paid. And he, he they believe it's going to be with, stay with the Cowboys. Cowboys should know better than that. Now, unless the, if the Cowboys let him go, that's the dumbest fucking thing. But if the Cowboys trade him, that's a, you know, that's a whole different story. We can talk about that. But if you if you let him go and you don't pay him, and you just that, that's just Jones is being dumb. And if they play a game of negotiation, like they're going to get something, and they wait and wait and wait, and then they sign him, it's going to cost us sixty million dollars mm-hmm. to thirty million for Micah. So I have to be Jones just stop real. playing games, Joneses. I agree with Pioneer here. What was that? He said the same mercenary Jesse is the guy that sabotaged Dak regarding his situation. That's true. I he works I for the front see office. A pattern. CD scheduled to be negotiated with next. Expect yeah. Jesse to do something yep. similar with him. Now I'm not Jesse's saying uh... you're saying it, <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm saying it. I'm just saying we feel it's it. there. Yeah, listen, Jesse Holly is like the the mouthpiece for almost feels like he's like the front office, the Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones mouthpiece to deal with players that want to taint. <laughs> yep, Juan Carlos, Luis Ortiz are saying basically clown show, bullshit, what the hell are you even thinking, well, right? That's like you're <laughs> trading away, you know, your most productive player or like talking shit, you know, like basically yeah, they're like talking shit about his away. podcast and his talking too now, much and his attitude. James Hur and Sledhead are more on the other side basically saying like, uh, no, that's fine. We can we can move on from Parsons. I'm good with it. So I mean, my my fear. Go ahead. What's yours, man? I don't know what the big difference is between like the podcast bullshit talking and some of the bullshit talking that maybe players from days of yore would have done Mm -hmm. as Dallas Cowboys. But even I admit that the media situation is a little different than it was in the early mid late '90s with technology and everything else. So it's a little different hearing constant interviews and stuff that are filtered, edited somehow, some way versus. Well, yeah. constant podcasts and social media stuff where we're hearing these players raw, unfiltered. Yeah. And, and, not, and uh, that's not always the best. But I'm if, being real, yeah. But, and that's a great point you make. But I want to say this. If you trade Micah Parsons, and, and again, here, here's the thing with Micah. To me, he's one of the best players I've ever seen play defense. But I, I'm also going to say this. That by his fifth and his sixth and his seventh year, He's going to be a far, far from what he was his first, second, third, and fourth years. So, to me, I think as we get deeper in his career, if the Cowboys don't want to pay the money, you can tag him. You know, he can sit out, but I mean, he's not going to sit out and he's not going to miss out on twenty five million dollars. My point is, you can tag him for the for you can give him that rookie, you know, uh, fifth year option. You can tag him for a sixth year, possibly a seventh year, if you want to pay a little more. Still, if he's still at that level. And then even either you pay him what he was tagged recently because he kind of leveled off, or he's been beat up too much over the years of seven years of of getting targeted by offensive schemes, and he's just not not the guy you want to pay anymore that money. That's one way of getting the most out of Mike. It's not the not the nicest way, but it is business, and Mike is making money. But you know he he's not going to get that. You know that's an option the Cowboys have to use. And of course you sour. Team camaraderie, you soured, you know, Micah's view on the on the team. He's trapped with the Cowboys, but he's still making, of course, like thirty million a year. But he's not making fifty million a year, which is where he would bitch, and he would have the right to bitch. He's not allowed to par- partake in the in the uh, you know free agent market, and the, you know. So there's a lot of things you can do to get the most out of Micah, but you could also trade him and try to pull. I'm going to say this like a Herschel Herschel Walker type trade, and if you can trade him and get like you know a bunch of firsts and a bunch of seconds and it may be worth it for something like that. Just saying it. I'm not saying I want it because I think Michael's one of the best defensive players I've ever seen, and I've seen Lawrence Taylor and many others. But, yeah, it's about not just a year or two years or a great play. It's about a whole career. So we'll see how long Michael can do this for, uh, being a full-time edge rusher. I think under under, under Zimmer, he's going to look a lot different 
not in the way he plays. He's going to look great no matter where he's at, but he's going to be over center a lot more often and I think moved around left and right side throughout a game, which I didn't see Dan Quinn do very often with Micah. So I think we're going to get more. He's not going to play linebacker. He's going to be playing blitzing, pressuring linebacker, edge rusher type of guy. He's always the, the rusher. He's always going to be attacking, in my opinion. Look, he's not going to be a linebacker found, yeah, in coverage. Micah has found a way to be productive under every coach he's been mm-hmm. under because let's be real, he's going on his third coach and he has not been here very long. Third so, coach? Uh, with the Cowboys, you mean? Yeah, right? Second coach. No, because wasn't he here when... Nope, Dan Quinn was... Well, he came in when Dan Quinn was Oh, okay, here. sorry. So then that was my mistake. I apologize. I thought he was here when... Uh, God, it's not... Yeah, I almost I said Campbell. It's not... It starts with the C, Nolan. Though, doesn't it? No, Mike Nolan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, so and a lot of Mike's there at, at the... Uh, you no know, wonder at the I forgot corner. him. Mike, Mike. We, have, we had two Mikes right now. <laughs> yep. So, anyways... That's the deal there with uh, with Micah Parsons. I don't want to de- dive too deep into this because we won't know really until uh, to the future. I don't see the Cowboys making them. They're not even thinking about Micah Parsons' deal right now, although they're saying they want to get Dak and CD and Micah done. I don't buy it. I don't buy the, 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 the front office bullshit hype. I'm just not doing it. Now, you want to talk about the front office and what they try to do sometimes. You know, you got, of course, we got a deal hanging over our head at receiver, right, with CD Lamb. We got. We're waiting for that to come through. We got Brandon Cooks. You know, we can cut him, get eight million dollars, but we're gonna probably keep him for for really cheap for your number two receiver. So we got that third spot. Jalen Tolbert's an option. Are we gonna draft a guy? Some people say, well, let's what, what's not let's get Stephon Diggs. Shut the hell up. We're not, we weren't never gonna get Stephon Diggs. So the reality is, it's about our own guys, and it is Jalen Tolbert as our number three right now. Maybe a draft pick. But, you know, can I say uh, who I think we're going to draft to fill in that fourth spot maybe? Who? A guy we already have in this team. We drafted him already in the seventh round last year. How can we redraft him? Not, not draft. You know what I mean? He's like our, he's like our draft pick. It's Jalen Brooks. Now, here's what I'm saying. Look, Stephen Jones, even he said, very excited about our second-year players. You know how they do, right? But he mentioned, and so did McCarthy and others, mentioned Jalen Brooks a lot. When Jalen Brooks was targeted, which was not much, it was six times, he had six targets and he had six catches. So he was 100% on, on you know, target percentage. Hey, the most effective receiver. Yeah. When, when targeted, he had 111.1 passer rating for the quarterback, which was tied for eighth among all rookie wide receivers. So again, in 2024, looking good in 2023 for the minimal role. In 2024, he can look at him as a rookie receiver. That's not a seventh round pick anymore. To me, he feels more like that third-round pick type receiver. So we have to grab a receiver in the third. No, we can wait in the fifth, sixth, or under. I mean, we, have to, we don't have to go receiver. Our receiver is Jalen Brooks. I just kind of thought about that now. Like, Tolbert's our third. Fourth is Jalen Brooks. We've got Kavante Turpin fifth. There's a, you know, all-around kind of guy. With throwing there a rookie, we'll, we'll add a guy in there. We've got a bunch of practice squad guys. So, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't that I mean, make kind of sense? It seem like the Cowboys are looking at any receivers any sooner than yeah. like the fourth even, round yeah even the draft guys other than malachi Col- coakley or whatever I, that, yeah. other than one guy there's a receiver um and even he wasn't he corley to be in like he's a second, second he's a second rounder yeah he's a second round receiver so the cowboys uh, they're not going to probably get a second round receiver which means we're looking at a receiver later in this draft we're not even bringing in a lot of receivers for the for the 30 day visits so that means we're just the cowboys are not targeting receiver as a main focal point and i believe it's jalen tolbert's the number three and i believe it's because of jalen brooks as a number four now they expect a lot from him i don't i'm not all in on the whole stephen jones outlook but jalen brooks proved that he can play in the nfl he showed he he has some ability yeah. definitely should have been drafted higher than the seventh round and now is going to be the guy that's going to be our fourth guy he's gonna be our depth receiver that we would have drafted this year we drafted him last year in the seventh round. Now he just has to rise to the challenge. Saying, but do, you know what I mean? I think that is a fair assessment. The way they, whether the Cowboys agree or not, I think they're looking at him as this year's receiver draft. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the guy we drafted, Jalen Brooks, last year's seventh rounder, who would probably be a third or fourth rounder this year. So I'm just saying, 2023 had six targets, six catches, 64 yards. He had zero drops, a 10.7 yards per reception. Every catch, he had over 10 yards. He had five yards after the catch. So, uh, you know, yak, yards after catch per reception, that's the same as CeeDee Lamb. Five yards per catch. I know, only six catches. Still, <laughs> that's 30 yards after the catch. That's pretty good for for a, a guy who's only getting six catches, right? So he had, a hundred, like I said, 111.1 passer rating when targeted. That's second on the team. 
behind CeeDee Lamb, of course, because, you know, of course, you know, tar- he was targeted a lot, but it's more the passer rating. I mean, when you have six catch, six targets, and you catch them all, you're going to be up on the top. So it's kind of slanted. Targeted six times, caught six passes, 64 yards. So it's only, you can only give him so much credit, but he looked good out there. He ran the routes. He didn't look scared. It wasn't too big for him. He was able to not have any drops. Even the car, the catches that hit him in the hands, a lot of these young guys will drop it. Yeah, no, no, not Jalen Brooks. So I think Jalen Brooks, he just got to expand on this times 10, you know. But I think he I think he looks like he's confident he can do it. Mm-hmm. It will be very interesting to see him in the second year more confident, just in the second year in the NFL. Very steady for a young guy and yeah. obviously surpassed expectations. Yes, which, for which sure. The expectations, let me be yeah. more clear there, which is obvious the way that the Cowboys are moving forward possibly, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So we know the Cowboys not going all in. They're going all in with our own guys, and that's one of our guys. So we, I think Jalen Brooks is one of those guys that will step up. I'm not doing – fuck Stephen Jones and all Jerry Jones and their stupid shit. I just think that the guy showed me that he's got enough to be like a fourth-round receiver this year in the draft. Okay, we don't have fourth-rounder. We got Jalen Brooks. So if you don't get a, a, a receiver in the day one or day two, don't shit a brick, guys. We got Jalen Brooks, and that's our – pretend he's our pick. That's why I got to look at this to keep Andy my sanity. Hodge. Shout out to you. What's up? Much love. Andy um, in the house. I know he I know he dropped off the, I was gonna the say, uh, doesn't star look level. Like the membership but, went through as of yeah. now. Andy, but. yeah, I mean, I didn't see it. Uh, we had you in the raffle, though. We did keep you in the raffle, but, um, you know, we... Yeah, just letting you know. We Yeah, you're out, you're out of it right now, but, we, you know, we've got April's raffle coming up, so jump back in it, and we got you, brother. Um, also... You know, talk about this offense. Oh, oh go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, said, go ahead. No, just yeah. Sledhead said, MCF, it sounds like a shaky wide receiver core. Well, again, when you look at CeeDee Lamb, the best receiver in the league possibly, right? Brandon Cooks, I'm going to say a solid number two, especially the second half of the season. Solid. Not a great. Solid number two. Number three, I, the, Michael Gallup was trash, guys. <laughs> this last year, he didn't do anything. Tolbert's an upgrade on Gallup. Yes, I said it. And Jalen Brooks is an upgrade uh, I think, in the sense of our fourth receiver that we usually relied upon, yes, Tolbert. It, I guess it falls off a little bit because you you go in Jalen Brooks, but that's the question mark to me more than anybody. Is Jalen Brooks he going to take that step as the number four? He should be able to do that. Getting you know maybe maybe he'll get instead of six targets this year, he might get thirty six targets. You know he's not going to expect to get eighty six targets. Yeah. So I think he's fine at the fourth spot, and you know getting closer and closer to maybe. Seeing if he could have, if he can shine a little bit with those thirty or forty targets, now you see him moving into the third receiver spot next year. Tolbert into the second spot. CDR number one. I'm just saying that's what it feels like. They're trying. The Cowboys are trying to go towards. That's what they Lewis want. Said he just wants to see us get like big, bigger receivers, bigger targets for Dak to hit. I agree with the uh, guys. No it, matter, you know, yeah. no matter what happens, you know. Basically, it avoids yeah. that whole interception in the middle thing, too, if you just got him bigger guys there. Well, I, I think in the middle is not uh, the biggest issue for Dak and getting taller guys. I think it's more it's more red zone. To me, red zone is where you want to have the receivers utilizing them in the red zone where you can throw the ball up and let them jump over the, the defender. Cowboys had opportunities. Now, I know some of you guys really love Martavius Bryant, but the guy's a free agent. Again, why? Or I think he's maybe he's our, on our he's on our con- he's on our futures contract with us. Why is he practice squad? Because he just ain't ready yet. He's big. He's all these things, but he's just not the guy he was. So we gotta find, look. I think you could get a guy like this in the draft. You get a guy get a guy like this who's undrafted. I'm just saying you get a guy that specializes in, as a big receiver. In these in this situation where you get a, you get a situation where you got a guy that is not gonna play the whole game. When you get to the red zone, you can kind of insert him. Now, I'll say one more thing about Jalen Brooks, guys. Jalen Brooks, I don't think, is a short receiver. I think Jalen Brooks is actually a pretty, a pretty big receiver, so he high points the ball. Maybe you see Jalen Brooks as that that red zone guy a little more this year. I'm just throwing it out there. Don't kill me for it. But I'm just I'm thinking the way the Joneses are trying to make us think, and i gotta, I got to put myself in their minds because that's what it's going to be like. And if they think Jalen Brooks is a big enough guy, he's kind of our third or fourth round receiver this year in their heads, and they expect him to play like you know that fourth slot right now and maybe get some of those red zone spots, I think he, Jalen Brooks, is a good, high point, tall enough, strong enough receiver that can go up there and grab that ball in the red zone. But they'll draft a guy, they, they'll, they'll, they'll pick up a free agent for a million bucks, that's a tall guy, and he might never play. He might be practice squad like Martavius Bryant. Mm. So, you know. I'm with you on that, but it's not the, the middle of the field. We got the guys. It's not the problem. That's going to be more on on coverage schemes and and route combinations more than it is about having a tall receiver. 
But anyways, uh, appreciate the comments by everybody. By the way, hit the like, subscribe, notification bell. McLovin think, in the house. Yeah, is he? Is McLovin? Oh, McLovin yes, is. He is. The, he, oh, he is in the house. Hell yeah. Appreciate those that rep it here. I know we shout out Jason Renfro who's repping not just the leader of the gifting board, but he's mm-hmm. also 98 points on the stream boss and up there in the top five of the board. Currently, of course, our Cash App King and the sponsor of the week is Mr. Harley Dad. But Harley Dad has been passing it now too, right now, in the middle of the week, end of the weekend here. McLovin is in the lead in first place in the Cash App and the overall board. So now we got to see what happens as we continue this thing. Good luck to all. And hey, McLovin, also won a jersey, gifted it back. Thank you. The kids are going to love it. Repping that star here, though. <laughs> Much love to McLovin. We'll see him after dark tonight, I think. Maybe we'll both make an appearance. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. But either way, uh, much love to Seabass, who also dropped the love here in the over everything. He's in the membership again. Dwayne Bersar with the thanks button. Skeptical fan with that $2 holler. Thank you guys for the drops of love tonight here as we kind of getting close to wrapping it up because I am to the portion of the, almost to the, to the draft, right? We're a couple 30, the 30 visit guys and we're done with this for tonight. We got our two days covered, and we might be back tomorrow, but definitely Sunday for the final wrap-up finale. We'll wrap up the weekend on, on Sunday if we're not live on Saturday night. The Cowboys last year, we scored on 52% of our total offensive drives. 52%, guys. That's number one in the NFL. So ups and downs in the beginning, very down offense in the first five weeks, six weeks of the season, but... After that, we regained it so well. We were number one in scoring on offense. Wherever we got that ball, we would score touchdowns 52% of the time. I'm sorry, score points 52% of the time, field goals or touchdowns. We're the only team last year to be able to do that, to go over 50% of our drives. The only team. So... Again, that is something that I just wanted to start off with. We talk about receivers. We'll see if we can keep that up with someone like Jalen Tolbert as a number three. And then you might have to see some Jalen Brooks as our number four. Kevontae Turpin as our number five. Maybe, you know, we'll see how we use these guys. Something to watch for. Because last year, we're 52% scoring. I mean, that's pretty good. Damn good scoring points on 52% of our drives. Now, we pick back up Chuma Adoga. As you guys know... Chuma Doga is, uh, you know, our, well, he's right here. Number 71. He is our offensive tackle guard, but he's our backup. He's a swing tackle play, left or right tackle. And we know we signed him. What's the financials on him? We always check on this. And guys, you know, baby, we, we always make a bet on this. Yeah. Like, not bet. We always like, I bet you it was this deal. It was a veteran set our salary benefit. It was a cheap deal. Well, of course, Chuma Doga, we don't expect much in money-wise. He's a backup, but... For left tackle insurance and left guard insurance and left tackle insurance, right guard, right tackle insurance, and just just left guard insurance as well. We got him for the veteran exception, the VSB, meaning that he's only guaranteed one hundred and fifty two million, one hundred and fifty two thousand dollars. That's his max signing bonus, and he's just one point zero nine two million dollar cap charge for us. The cheapest you can get a veteran like him. If he makes the team. If he don't make the team, we owe him $152,000 and uh, and no cap hit. I mean, the cap hit doesn't even hit the cap, honestly. So I, I think this he'll is end up on the team, but yeah, well, this is the not cheapest, a bad deal for us. A great deal for a guy who can be a you know, backup, but literally no, this is a move we made. We could have picked up an undrafted guy. We could have picked this guy up uh, you know, in two, three months from now. My point is that this is a such a, it's significant that we got him back. He knows the team and you know he's the, he's the, the decent backup. But insignificant in the money pay here. This it's just, move is yeah. not a bad is, move. I'm going to be real. Yeah, it, it is a it, good, this is one of your smart picks. move. This is the time. You, you had said this is one of them that you it thought actually, he was going to come it back. It was, but I'm not here to brag. <laughs> I'm giving you all the credit. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, the thing is that the move by itself, right? Like with no other context, no other information, no nothing. If it stands alone, it's a very solid, smart move. You got yourself some really... Decent, I veteran, mean, O-line depth for yeah. a fantastic price. Veteran depth, veteran. But you, when you know. start looking at the bigger picture and you're mm. like, okay, what else have we done? 
And then poor Chuma standing here basically by himself with with uh, our our long snapper and and CJ Goodwin. He's throwing there and, Jordan Lewis. I guess that's uh, one of our better that's what re-signings. I'm saying. Like it's that is one very small lonely little island <laughs> to be standing on. And amongst... I don't have Chuma on the list, but he got him to the returns. But look at that. We got so, Rico, yeah. CJ Goodwin, Jordan Lewis, Trent Zeke, Carl Davis, and the only addition is Eric Hendricks. Which is a good, a great addition, but that, that, that doesn't compare to our offensive line. And that's basically look at the all departures. I mean. The move itself is fine, <laughs> but when you look at it in the bigger exactly. context of the moves that we have or Agreed. haven't made, well, of course it falls short. Of yeah. course it feels like okay, and like <laughs> so what? I agree. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this, baby. Moving on to another quick little tidbit here. When it comes to cornerback, corner, not quarter, cornerback, Trayvon Diggs, Deron Bland, Jordan Lewis, they're all here. But no Stephon Gilmore yet, and he hasn't signed anywhere yet. The Carolina Panthers, they want him, but no signing yet. Maybe he's asking for 11, 10, 11 million. He ain't going to get that. So, who might we, you know, we keep talking about cornerbacks out there floating around. The, 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 the numbers are going down for corners now. We're at the level where all the top corners are kind of gone. And the corners that are left are definitely like in the 7 million and be, below that. Yeah. Stephon Gilmore is probably overshooting. But the thing is, the Cowboys are not interested in bringing him back. But when you talk about cornerbacks, think about this. This is why you do the Trayvon Diggs deal a little earlier like we did last year. Okay. And we didn't even do it early. We did it at the beginning of training camp. But reminding everybody that the Trayvon Diggs deal that we did last year, which was $19.4 million average per year, right? Figure $19.5 million a year for Trayvon Diggs. This year already, there's two contracts that have $24 million and $26 million more in guarantees Ouch. than Trayvon Diggs. Then there's $19.4 million per year. So that's how much more money you're spending now on a cornerback this year than literally not even a year ago last year. And it's not Trayvon Diggs' fault. It's not the other guys that got signs fault. It's the market. People don't want to under- understand. They just want to say, I want this guy. Give me him. Give me this guy. Now, the market has dropped off for the, those levels, levels, leveling down. Now we're at the Stephon Gilmore level of the cornerback market, which is under $10 million. So, again, big. if you're on the top of this shit, you're, you're raking it in. But once you're at this level now, it's really dropping a lot more. And you still got talent out there. But the cornerback numbers are dropping. So, hopefully, I still think, whether it's draft, I'm not really comfortable about that. But our starting three, one of them is going to get hurt. Jordan Lewis is going to get hurt. Trayvon Diggs could get hurt. Deron Bland, I'm just saying, knocking on wood, no one gets hurt. But if we lose one of these guys, now we have Nashawn Wright starting. That's why I say we still need to look at cornerback in a real way. I would like to get a veteran guy, even if he's average, someone better than Deshaun fucking Wright, please. Now, moving to the linebacker spot, before we get to the draft, one quick little note here is about the Marvian Overshone, who's working hard to get back. We, we posted a video of him in a short yesterday doing some drills. I want to make sure. Some people were criticizing Overshone in the drills because he was not going full speed. He was like taking the corners, like uh, not really cutting it as much. Guys, this is he's still rehabbing back from the torn ACL. And he said, quote, this is a comfortable speed drill. That's the name. It's a comfortable speed drill. Literally means what it says there. You run it at a comfortable speed. He said, quote, it really emphasizes a smooth transition. First day doing it, five months till training camp. Ten plus pounds. Still a little stiff, though. Some people were saying he was too stiff. He goes, I said the same thing. So I like his attitude. He loves the Cowboys. This guy want to be... DeMarvin Overshone wanted to be a Cowboy since he was four years old. So this one thing about DeMarvin Overshone, he's working hard because he wants to be the best wearing that star in his helmet. So I, I'm, I'm glad and proud the way he's reacting to the criticism about looking stiff. He's like, yeah, I, I agree. You know, I'm still five months away from training camp. And, you know, we're still just doing that drill for the first time. So much love to Overshone. Now, to talk about, you know, we missed big time, right? On Overshone last year. When you look at our draft, man. And I say Mozzie Smith, Luke Schoonmaker, DeMarvin Overshone with the injury mm. and down this list. So Jalen Brooks might come up as the big savior here in, in a way. But what about this year? So I'm going to go through a real quick little board I saw here. It's made by CBS Sports. All right? And they have basically 26 of our 30 visits that have been reported official. So let's take a look at this. This is pretty big, guys. So let's... Oh, that's the kickoff rule. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, where is it? Now I can't Now I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Here it is. The 30 visits with our draft. So there's our draft. First, second, third round. Fifth round, sixth round, two seventh rounders. 
And then you see where we fall with our guys that we have brought into Dallas to the star to be evaluated by our scouts, by Will McClay, Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones, our coaches. These are the guys confirmed. Every single name you see here has been confirmed. There's four names not confirmed yet. And I'll go through it real quick, but this is where they fall, guys. And I'm going to give you the info right off the bat before we even go through this. The way the 30 visits have panned out, talent-wise, you add it up, position-wise, for the Cowboys, the draft order would fall as offensive lineman, center or tackle in the first round. Second round would be a linebacker, based on the guys we got in there in the second round. And third round would be running back. Kind of what you said. Now, I'd rather trade that. Da- exactly trade, what I said. I'd yeah. rather trade back. I'm not here to brag. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather trade back and add another 100 pick on the, you know, add another third rounder or second rounder on there. I would rather trade back and get four picks in those th- first three rounds. But here's here are the names, guys. And again, in round one, you're looking at a guy, probably the 14th ranked guy here by CBS. He's not going to come to us. Fuaga. We've talked about the offensive tackle. Byron Murphy, I, if he's there, they take him. Byron Murphy from Texas, but he's going to be gone around 15th. At 21st, you have Troy Fatuanu from Washington, offensive tackle and guard. He's going to be right there at 21. And then at 26, a pass rusher, edge rusher Darius Robinson from Missouri. Again, I'm not saying we're drafting these guys or I like them or don't like them. These who are the Cowboys have brought in. These are the names. I'm not making them take them out of thin air. These are Cowboy named names that have been visiting us. How about at the 33rd pick? Again, still first round-ish, kind of second round. But we got, what is it, JPJ Center, Jackson Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon. He's around the 55th pick right there. Um, and I also think Graham Barton, they put him at 51. There's no way he's going to 51. So to me, he's more of a, you know, 33, 34. He's, that's a trade back pick right mm-hmm. there. If both these guys are available and we can trade back to the 31st or 32nd pick, you're going to get a fantastic guard or, you know, you're going to get a fantastic guard center combo in JPJ or Graham Barton from Duke. So that's the round one. As you can tell, offensive tackle, offensive tackle, guard, center, guard, I'm just saying, you're getting a lot of centers and guards and tackles in the round one. You got one defensive tackle and one defensive end. And that's it. And the rest are offensive linemen. Hmm. That's why that first round is going to be offensive linemen, guys. I mean, it's, it's got to be. And then you got in the round in round two, you got Kingsley Samu Taina. He's a 40th kind of guy there. Offensive tackle from BYU. If we go trade back a little bit, you might see us go grab one of these offensive linemen or two, right? You got Edrin Cooper from Texas A&M, who's like the highest ranked off-ball linebacker. Mm -hmm. He visited the Cowboys. Then closely behind him, North Carolina State linebacker Peyton Wilson. Round two kind of check there. Malachi Corley, wide receiver in Western Kentucky. He is right there as well (laughs) in that round two, right where we're going to pick. And then Jonathan Brooks sneaks into this round two. I don't give a fuck if he's there. Cowboys, you better not take him. But you look at this, you're looking at two, three linebackers, a receiver, a running back, and an offensive lineman in round two. In round three, you're looking at Jatavion Sanders from Texas, a tight end. That ain't happening. You got offensive tackle Matt Conclavis, which we talked about him yesterday. He's around the 84th spot there, Braylon. A running back, Braylon Allen from Wisconsin. He's at 86. You got Trey Benson, who I really, really like from Florida State, right there around the 100th pick. And then linebacker junior Col- Colson from Michigan. It'd be a great pick at linebacker at that, you know, in the third round. I don't think he'll be there. But these are the round two, three guys that you can see the Cowboys may be going after. We only have one, one round three or four guy, which makes sense since we don't have a, a fourth rounder. Mm-hmm. It's running back Bucky Irvin from Oregon. So you're seeing a lot of running backs. That's why third round target is seems to be a running back right again now. i you know obviously <coughs> mcw is uh the new nostradamus here because uh, i feel like i'm three for three tonight on things you've mentioned that oh hey you know mcw mentioned this a while ago and look at that now it's coming true now of course no i'm not nostradamus i just know this team we you know <clears throat> obviously my educated opinion but look everyone kind of knew online is going to be the first round pick anything <clears throat> past that is really just anyone's guess but 
I kind of just assumed based on team needs, you know, that and and the and honestly, the only thing that made me go running back in the third mm-hmm. round were Jerry and Steven Jones' own comments about yep, how we're yep. going to do things differently at the running back position. And, you know, all these moves <laughs> were basically left on the table. Moves that, under yep. any other circumstance, the Cowboys would have jumped on Agreed. easily. Agreed. So, you know, we look at these picks in the first four rounds. We don't have a fourth rounder. Mm-hmm. But you go, again, I, I still trade back like, like Tyrone Church said. I'm all about trading back. You got a, a good center guard combo players available at 31, 32. And you get yourself another second rounder, possibly late second, because you're trading with someone <clears throat> at, the, at the end, like Kansas City or yeah. or Buffalo or the Ravens, the three teams I'm looking at. <clears throat> you trade with them, you're going to get a second rounder because you're at the end of the second round. Uh-huh. You get a third rounder now, it ain't worth it as much anymore. So I'm thinking, you know, you get yourself two second rounders, one a little earlier, like, you know, maybe at 20, the 24th spot in the second round, and then. The 32nd spot. Those are major, major pickups there. And you get yourself three of these names on that round one and round two board. That's pretty fun. That 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 makes me a little that makes my goosebumps go up, man. That makes me tickle. That makes me really, really giddy. And I get really happy when I hear if we can get like maybe three top fifty, maybe. I mean, I don't I guess not we'd be top fifty. We'd we'd have to be like sixty, but whatever it would be in the second round. We can possibly get three guys by the end of the second round. That would be Fantastic, and, I, and we could still get ourselves a solid center or tackle, probably more a center or a guard at that thirty-second spot. And I think there'll be two or three guys we can pick from. So that's the first day one, day two kind of look, right? When you're looking now at day four, which we don't—I mean, uh, day three, which we don't have a fourth-round pick. Let's go to rounds five, six, and seven, mm-hmm. where you have, you know, really the back end of the fifth round, back end of the sixth round, and the end of the seventh round, the end of the draft. Nathaniel Watson from Mississippi State. He's kind of the higher ranked guys there. He's a linebacker. You got a running back, Imani Bailey from TCU. You got linebacker Trayvon Wallace. I believe the Cowboys may take him, may even double dip at linebacker. They really like him from Kentucky. So you might see him as a fifth rounder there. You also see um, running back Jace McLennan from Alabama. And Brandon Coleman, offensive tackle from TCU. So those are the prospects in the fifth, sixth round there. Maybe one of the seventh round, uh, one of these guys might slip into the seventh round. You also got some definite seventh rounders and undrafteds, which I would say running back Tyrone Tracy from Purdue is an option there. I think this is a guy the Cowboys really like, and he may be an undrafted pickup or a seventh round kind of flyer, Rasheen Ali. They really like him from Marshall, running back. He does a lot of stuff out there that kind of be a scat back type mm-hmm. of guy. I like this. It could be the guy who replaces Deuce Vaughn in a way. Uh, you got linebacker that's from Temple. The Cowboys like him a lot. Jordan McGee. He's also back into the seventh round or undrafted. And don't forget about offensive tackle Travis Glover from Georgia State. He would be more of an undrafted type of guy. When you look at these 30 visits guys, let me just say some names real quick. <clears throat> when I look at offensive line, the top names, Fuaga, he's, he's not going to be there. But Jackson Powers Johnson, Graham Barton. Those are the two names I've been singing the whole freaking offseason. Those are the top names I've said. And then we lost Tyron Smith. But I still like them. You got Sima Tiaia, whatever. I can't, he's a second-round guy. The offensive tackle. And Matt Conclavis, more of a second, third-round type of guy. I talked about him last night. To me, those are like the, the true targets for the Cowboys outside of Fuaga. When you look at running backs, you start looking at their best guys as Jonathan Brooks. To me... I would not risk it with his ACL, but I'd rather go for Trey Benson from Florida State. And maybe you can get lucky, get him with that a trade back kind of situation. You get at back end of the second round or another early third round or something like this. That's where you get your running back. You get a Trey Benson there. You got Braylon Allen and Bucky Irvin. Of course, like I said, Rashana, Rasheen Ali, who I think would be more a seventh round or undrafted possibility. But a lot of running backs there. You got Imani Bailey, more of a, of a day three guy. Jace McLennan. Tyrone Tracy, like I said, Rasheen Ali. These are day three guys. These are fifth, sixth, seventh round guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say fourth, fifth, seventh, sixth, seventh round guys. So who's the Texas A and M kid? Uh, the linebacker. I'm Texas? guessing just based on the timing of the comment. Um, I don't think I said uh, the Texas A and M. The only Texas A and M guy I think that we have, we have Texas running back Jonathan Brooks. But I was going to go to linebackers, and that's the, the number one linebacker on my list that the Cowboys have brought in. 
is Texas A&M linebacker, off-ball linebacker, Edgerin Cooper. Okay. So that's the guy Which to me. I think is the guy that he had mentioned earlier okay. that he wanted a seat. To me, to me, he's the guy. He's the second round kind of target expectation if we get if we do the right stuff in the first round. So Edgerin Copper, he's right there, a little earlier than we pick. Second round, pick fifty eighth. He he's expected to go around fiftieth. So we'll see if he gets to us. Edgerin Copper is a guy, but if we miss on him, there's a linebacker Peyton Wilson there. So we, we go that way. I know the Cowboys like him too. Peyton Wilson, they got Junior Colston, who's more of end of the third round type of guy. And uh, Nathaniel Watson, which I think they really like him. He's like a fifth round, sixth round, like steal in the Cowboys' mind, and Will McClay's mind from Kentucky. He's an ace, he's the first one of the first names that came up. And uh, I think he's the guy the Cowboys just targeted from the beginning. They want him. So they might even draft him earlier than he should just because they really want him. All right. So those are the. Then the main names to kind of keep an eye on, you see not many receivers. That's why I brought up Jalen Brooks. He's our receiver in this draft. Just try to think of it like that, guys. And tell me what you think. And if you're watching the replay, comment, and, and I'll look at your – I'm curious to what you guys think. I want to know what you guys think in the chat. So type in a couple things. But I think Jalen Brooks is our wide receiver in day one or two of this – in day two of this draft, like a third or fourth round receiver. That's Jalen Brooks now in the Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones mind. So he's our number four. Jalen Bro- Jalen uh, Tolbert is our number three. I think the receiver. You're not seeing a lot of receiver moves, free agency by us, or even in the draft. Even though we may pick one, we'll definitely sign a bunch of undrafted guys. But I think Jalen Brooks is their kind of draft pick, kind of push to this season a little bit because he he has the higher upside. He did so well in his limited progress and again he could you could you could still call him a rookie in a way but he was he has nfl background already nfl game that he was not a, a he's not afraid or scared of the of the of the lights and he you know somebody who's just going to get better with a whole season an off season of of you know training with the cowboys you know it's just going to make you better in every single way than in the college or high school days so jalen brooks is the cowboys receiver pick in my humble opinion that's why you're not seeing a lot of receivers coming in the only receiver the Cowboys brought in Malachi Corley and he's going to be literally the 58th pick which is our pick or if we're the 56th pick if it fell, fell the way a CBS sports does he'd be the guy we'd get and that'd be a second round pick and there's no way the Cowboys should do that in my humble opinion I don't think so so I do want to finish this up though with two last names not right. not, not last names but two last Final players names. yes that are not on this list but I want to say, I want to know what you guys think. Of course, these are the kind of guys that are off the board a little bit. You might not have heard a name that's not kind of because of the when it, I look at nose tackle. I'm looking in the trenches, and nose tackle to me, interior defensive lineman. Take note of this guy, Brandon Dorless. Brandon Dorless to me is being kind of overlooked because of the bigger names right now in the interior defensive lineman. Mm. Based on what teams are telling telling uh, you know most 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 people, Doris is a virtual day two lock, kind of under the radar, because he's got potential to be eventually kind of a double digit sack like pass rusher, as a run stopper and a pass rusher. So he has natural rush pass rushing reactions and counter instincts, and it makes him a likely round three option for for a team that doesn't have a lot of defensive tackles. So again, we get a second, we get a second, third round pick. You could see Brandon Dorless coming in town. He could be our fourth, you know, pick of the draft, even though he's let's say the end of the third round. But that I think he's a guy that would help this team is a, is a more realistic pick if the Cowboys are serious about trying to stop the run. Mm. You know, he's from Oregon, by the way. Tyron Church said that he's a third for me, and I prefer a free agency defensive tackle. Luis Ortiz said, uh, okay, no, sorry, you're talking about something else. No, no, I, you know, I, I actually do prefer a free agent tackle as well. I just don't know if the Cowboys will sign sign anybody. If the, the Cowboys... We don't even know what the meaning of a free agent is at this point. <laughs> I'm telling you. I agree, though. I, I Listen, I, I'm just look, talking, uh, you know, rookies right now. You got a guy falling under the radar a little bit. If our guys are taken or we got an extra pick, Brandon Dorless could help us. In that rotation, because we got not much in there. I'm gonna be honest. So I would, I'm with Tyron. Let's sign somebody for 1.2 million dollars, the veteran benefit, and there's got to be somebody out there. Isaiah Bugs, I think, is still out there rolling around. Let's go grab him and throw him on his team. 
That's all we need. It would make Dorless not that much of a need anymore. But I just wanted to throw him in there. And I wanted to say this. Because, again, his, his the other thing about Dorless, as an end of the third round kind of pick, he's very unique. His position usage is unique. He has 1,950 total reps. 755 was at defensive tackle, nose tackle. So that's a zero tech, one tech. 522 of his pass rush, of his, of his reps came with a hand down in a 3-4 defensive edge rusher. But a 3-4. So three down linemen. He was your outside edge guy, but he was really, you know. With Zimmer, you're going to have both looks out there, guys. He's also had 673, you know, uh, snaps. Believe it or not, as a Leo or outside linebacker. So this big man playing inside can also step up and play as an edge rusher. Something to keep in mind, again, a guy who has a big upside on the rush side of the, on, on rushing the quarterback, but he's doing it from the interior, from all over, really. He, a, a crazy scheme, diverse position flex you don't see very often. So I'm bringing him up, guys. Third round pick, you just never know, especially if we trade back and add a third rounder. Maybe makes it a little more, maybe maybe a little better to like, hey, let's roll with Mozzie and this guy for the future if Osa you know, can't pick up the exactly. the, the, the slack, slack. Or, yeah. or something yeah. else is going on, whatever the reason. You know, Zimmer is a very creative, you know, uh, defensive coordinator, which worries me with, with the team learning everything. But the teams that do have creative defensive coordinators are going to love the upside of a player like Brandon Dorless from Oregon. So if we have, a, if you believe the Zimmer can be creative, and I think he is, third downs, he's creative. He has half field splits where he has half the field zone, the other half. Is man and it switches depending on the, the on the offense. That's the kind of shit that the players got to get down. But you have a creative de- defensive coordinator like Zimmer, he could have a lot of great usage for a guy who could play nose tackle or edge rusher mm. in, in a four three or three four. So to me, someone is kind of, just a name that popped out. I really like him. Now one last name, and I'm sure you guys already heard. This guy is is a huge person. All right, the best kept secret possibly in the draft. Offensive tackle. From he's he a Tongan, offensive tackle, Giovanni Manu. Hmm. All right. So what makes him <laughs> such a well kept secret? First, you gotta see a picture of this guy. This guy's like like Tyron Smith, like oh, like that kind of damn. body. But he is six foot seven, three hundred and fifty two pounds, pure muscle. Hot damn. He ran a four point nine six at his pro day. Four point nine six. I mean, you know. And. Featured half of the NFL scouts were in attendance just for his pro day. Jeez. He also had a vertical jump, which was kind of like sh- shook some people, 33 feet, 5 inches. Now, he just concluded his first 30 visit with guess who? The Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys are looking at Manu. And, hey, you know what? He played football for the University of British Columbia. And he has six, vi- six thir- 30 visits on his docket right now. So Cowboys and six other teams are interested right now with him. And I'm really interested in the way this guy... Look, there's something bad with him. He, he gets called for a lot of penalties, holding when he's playing tackle. Yeah, it already sounds like a Cowboy. Okay. Exactly, yeah. But look, you got to take a look at him. Listen, he's very athletic. He's agile. At 352, he's strong and fast. Talented basketball player. Might remind you of currently DJ Burns. Some of those vibes you get if you're watching the tournament right now. Um, but if you guys look at, uh, yeah, when you look at, um, I think five years ago, he averaged 32 points a game. <laughs> I think it was in the, if I'm not mistaken, was it in the, was it in this? I don't know. I, look, I know that he did very well. I think it was in the final, in the, in the 64. I think it was in the, in the March Madness tournament. But, it, again, he'll be drafted to play football. He was very talented as a basketball player. And to me, it just shows his agility. It shows you like a DJ. Who, by the way, DJ Burns is not going to play football. He's already okay. announced that. But but gives you those vibes. He's, a, he's a, again, a, like a Tyron Smith, right? Tyron Smith is like not human when you look at the way he's built. Yeah. Same thing with this guy. I'm going to show you a picture after the stream, baby. Sure. Originally, he's from Tonga. All right? All right. Giovanni Manu played his college football at British Columbia. And that's where he developed a bruising reputation. He's a glass yeah. eater. He's very sharp off the field, and he's very physical on the field. It's going to be very, very interesting where this guy lands in April. Now that the secret is out of the bag. And now, you know, we know the Cowboys are the first team he visited. Yep. 
I'm really hoping we can pull, uh, you know, this would be a great little, like, steal if we can find this guy somehow, get him on our, on our side. But it's kind of like our own Jordan Maialata from the Eagles, who just signed a huge contract today. This guy we're talking about, Manu, is a mountain of a man, an athletic mountain. The Cowboys are doing all their research. They brought him in. Uh, you know, and not just him. A lot of offensive linemen with freaky traits, the Cowboys are bringing in. A lot of versatility, the Cowboys are bringing in. But just so you guys understand kind of like the, the mystery with him, he played at a very small school. Mm-hmm. So it's not much, you know, trust in that how he's going to be in the NFL. He has a, he does get called for penalties, but he's also a bruising, beat-you-up type of player. But again, British Columbia. I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of doubt and question marks around him. Yeah. The key here is people that are similar situation. That are, like for, I'm going to use a guy example. Offensive tackle Jake Witt was a prospect. Last year, with these same kind of freakazoid traits. Okay. All right? A project from a smaller school, which is what Giovanni Manu is. He's a project from a smaller school All that right. has incredible physical and athletic traits. He went. He got drafted by the Colts last year in the seventh round. Okay. Jordan Maliata from the Eagles, drafted in the seventh round. By the Eagles. Okay. What I'm trying to say is you might want to draft them in the sixth round. This guy Manu. That's all. I'll throw okay. that out there. So again, guys, all these great hype things about him, there's a lot of unknowns. No one's going to draft him the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth rounds. But then in the sixth or seventh, someone might go take a chance on him. Because you got a lot of draft picks. And guess what we got? In the sixth, seventh round, we got a lot of draft picks there. So again, I would love to see this guy get on this team somehow. And see what we can do with this massive human being, 6'7", 352 pounds. And the guy is fast. He can jump. He's athletic. He's a bruiser. He's a glass eater. But he also gets called for penalties and played in a small school. So there's those things. But, hey, just throwing out some names. Any other thoughts on these guys or or more, maybe on you or in the chat as we wrap it up tonight on another MCF after uh, dark. Elko's comment uh, cracked (laughs) me up here. He said, Isaac Alarcón was a big man, too. (laughs) <laughs> Who wanted cake? He just wanted cake. Yep, yeah, I hear you. No, I hear you. That's why he's not a. Listen, would you mind using a a seventh one of our two seventh round picks if he's there? And Manu, would you take him? I would. I would in a drop of a dime. That's just me. I'll roll the dice and. Re- Tyrone Church said, "You know, uh, we need to trade back because we can get him in the fourth. So Manu, I'm not sure who exactly they were. If it's Manu, we'll probably get him in the sixth or seventh, according to most people. Although, you know, someone could drop him in the it could be one team out there that says, I want him in the fourth, and then they take him, you know? But then but let him take him. I was gonna say, yeah, if, if that ends up happening, then more then power so to it. them. That's fine. Yeah. If he's there in the sixth, though, I'm like, all right, maybe this is the time we take Manu and let's go and, and roll the dice on him. I'm not saying he's gonna be a superstar. Let's just roll the dice. Let's yeah. see how he does. So that's it for me, baby. Let me hear what the chat has to say. Yep. And do the combo shout-outs here as we wrap it up for tonight on a two-day combo special. So, uh, Luis Ortiz saying, you know, small school jump to the NFL. Yeah. So, uh, that's why he visited us. <laughs> so, Tyrone Church saying, you know, the defensive tackle. That's what he was talking about, the defensive okay, tackle, okay. defensive end. Oh, yeah, 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 doorless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Versatility. Oh, cool. Ford, said Simone player. players is something that Dallas lacks. Yeah, yeah. it's, you know. Simone, need to get yeah, a little that more is true. International, right? Some more flavors in here. That is true. We don't, we don't have many big guys like that. We could have had a couple guys. We passed on them. Hold hmm. on, the Rodriguez said, MCF, we need to draft a center. I'm, I'm with you. That's why I think the first round pick, you, dra- you, go, you drop back, guys. Drop back to the to the. To the 30s, all right? To 31, 32, to 30, 31, or 32. And now you may get, you know, JPJ or Graham Barton. That's a center guard. They play center and guard. Love it. Mm-hmm. That, that to me is the best move. Drag back, get extra second or third rounder, and then you throw in there, you know, you still get your center that you wanted. I'm mm. with you. So, I'm just kind of rolling back here, guys. Again, uh, I think that brings us to... The, close the end show, of yeah. the night. So, guys, you know, like Mr. Burn Bar said there in the chat, hashtag gang gang. <laughs> uh, take a second, hit like, subscribe, hit the bell, follow us anywhere and everywhere at my Cowboys family. Hop in the Discord link for that's in the description box below. But an extra special thank you to the people making MCF happen here on the daily and the nightly. Yes. Like today. People dropping the love, showing the love, right? I know we had a skeptical fan. 
Uh, yeah, skeptical. Drop um, some love here. Uh, Dwayne Brassard. Seabass is in the. Seabass in that over everything level, and of course Dwayne Brassard with the thanks button. Appreciate you. Also, the others that drop on our days off here, and we'll be going a little after dark tonight. I will be chilling with some of the family over there. So join us if you'd like. But big shout outs not just to those that drop tonight here, but also in the after dark sessions. Like skeptical fan Jason Renfro, Sco nine seven one, McLovin, Gloria, Marissa. Miko and Grateful Nomad. As you can see, After Dark, Harley Dad, repping the sponsor of the week and the Cash App Kingdom. Much love to him. And then you got Jason Renfro with 98 points, still hanging on there pretty pretty heftily as our stream boss. He, he uh, We got Skeptical Fan, who is the king, the leader, the champion of the gifting membership board. So much love to Mr. Skeptical Fan. He's got now two in a row, two weeks in a row, back-to-back like our 90s Cowboys. But there's Jason Renfro in the way. He's got one gifted membership, and he's coming for that, for that crown, trying to break that streak. When it comes to the other parts of the board, which is the cash app side and the overall board, you saw his name already. You got to shout out a lot of love to the man, McLovin, who's in the mm-hmm. lead on both of these boards, cash app and overall. So McLovin may be coming for that crown once again, and he's coming, and he may get into that raffle again and win another jersey. We'll see. Appreciate McLovin. Appreciate everybody who dropped the love. Appreciate everybody in the house. Let's do those final shout outs with a comment or two attached, you know, before we uh, finish our two hour mm-hmm. power pack two day show. Louis Ortiz, much love, saying, I would take uh, Bordellini before Manu mm. in the six or Interesting, round. interesting, interesting. All right, all right. Thomas maybe, Garrett maybe so. said, Expect some unpredictable stuff oh, yeah. in the draft. The Cowboys, we know that, the, not about Will McClay, but the front office has their favorites. We know this. Mm. They'll draft Even them early. You, Lee Side Harold, <laughs> take it easy. At least, Sledhead five zero. Yeah, at least, well. at least Lee Side's team can at least, at least now we can talk about them like a real team now again for once, right? For this, there was just, there was just a a, a, a shadow. Mm. <laughs> Tyrone Church, take it easy. Yeah. Much love. We have, of course, a man Louis Ortiz representing. Yeah. Let's see. I appreciate all the comments from Louis all night. Uh, I love to hear new thoughts in the comments, and we both learn, you know. So we have Lewis here as, well, I just shouted him out, sorry. Well, not sorry, but extra shout out to you. But Tyrone Church, much love. Rolando Rodriguez, representing, of course. Let me see who else we have here. Thomas Garrett, the superior Garrett. Oh, cool. Representing, much love. Let me see. Hold on to Rodriguez. Stay safe out there. Have a great night. Oh, cool. Much love. Let me see. Burn bar, of course. Take it easy. I'm going to shout someone out myself, baby. Go ahead. So, I'm McLovin. A, yeah, McLovin. We're going to see him in after dark sessions yeah, here. Yeah, actually as far back as the last It is go. Friday night, so probably have some drinks tonight. You know, I will. Mm-hmm. Have Modi's, a little party. Thank you. As Modi is in the house, appreciate you. But let me shout out Mr. Jason Renfro because he just dropped a dollar seventy-seven cent holler. In the cash app at the buzzer, and he said, "Yo, Cowboys!" Always, always go Cowboys. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate you much. Love. Yeah, such love to everybody in the house. Was repping that star with us over everything, taking part in our conversations on the nightly. Again, if big news hits, anything major at all, even little Cowboy news, it's really truly gonna be of importance to get out. We will talk about it tomorrow night right here on MCF. After that's after dark because it's already after dark here on MCF, but. We'll be here, on our, and we'll go another uh, do a, a live stream like tonight and mm-hmm. go through everything. But if it's just general bullshit, we're going to talk about it on Sunday, combine it on both days, and get you a power pack show to f- to wrap up the week, this week, of my Cowboys family. But we will see you after dark tonight, probably tomorrow night, maybe even Sunday night, this whole week, and we can check in there as well. And there's leaderboards there, there's leaderboards here, there's leaderboards all over the place. So appreciate everybody who... who, who uh, Jumps in on things in the membership, gifting it, super chats, a thanks button, uh, the PayPal's, the cash apps, all that good stuff. The, the help of the channel cannot be expressed to you guys how big it is for us to be able to take more time and do this thing here on the nightly. So thank you all on all that sides of things. Now, I think you did a little shout outs. Uh, no, Bobby Bottles, Woo. Juan Carlos, much love. Jason Renfro, yeah, shout Jason. out to you. Appreciate you. Uh, but yes, yeah, thank you to good. every single person here chilling, hanging with Tell us. Tell them why, baby. baby. Tell them why we do this each and every, almost each and every night. I think it's that navy blue, that silver too, and that star over 
everything. Win, lose, or draw, good, bad, or ugly. You see it. We always rep that star for everything. And here in my Cowboys family for almost seven years, win, lose, or draw, good, bad, or ugly. Never forget the number one thing here on this channel. As always, say it with us, say it loud, and say it proud. Go, Go Cowboys! Cowboys. Let's get that six and beyond. You know it. Thank you all for dropping your knowledge in the chat all night long. And there, again, appreciate you all dropping the love. Truly humbled by the love from above. Memberships and all the different ways you guys do it. We'll see you after dark for some more fun. After party. After dark. Thank you on that side as well, guys. And as we drop out and clock out for tonight, back maybe tomorrow, but definitely Sunday to close out the week. As we relock and reload for another show Tell them what we got to do before we drop out of here for the night. We got to drop the beat. Oh, yeah. That beat's been dropped here in MCF. And thank you all for another one here. Another night of news, info, and updates. A wrap-up of the entire, I guess, last two days. A wrap-up right here on another MCF Cowboys chat. Question marks when it comes to Micah? Yeah, we talked about that and more here tonight, guys. Micah, Dak, CD, everybody. And that money keeps piling up for Jerry and Steven, though. As they, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And they're also looking at uh, the draft. That's how we're going to fix everything. <sighs> we talked about it all here tonight. Right here in MCF where it's about that navy blue. That silver, too. That star of everything. Never forget the number one thing right here in my Cowboys family. Much love to... Every single person in the house can't do that, cannot do this without your guys' love and support. Make sure you don't forget to hit that like button for the stream. Hit subscribe for the channel. Keep it growing. Hit that notification bell to all videos so you know when we're going live. And you can follow us on all social media, X Twitter at My Cowboys Family. We got the Discord thing as well. All the information is in the description down below. If you're watching this in the replay, say hello and leave a comment as well. We appreciate everybody in the house. The drops of knowledge, the drops of love. We're dropping out. Stay safe. Much love. Have a great week. And we'll see you back here tomorrow or Sunday. Wrap up the week. And as always, never ever forget. Go Cowboys! Much love, Jason Renfro. We close it down with a $2 holler. Glad you had fun, brother. Peace. Hang out, Cowboys. See you after dark. Peace.